it's a bit chilly here. I wanted to escape the heat of Florence, which exceeded 102 degrees Fahrenheit. And I joked around that I was going to head over to the Alps. And lo and behold, I'm here with my friend Mary Jane, and we go to the Alps. <laughs> so now uh, we're literally in the town inside the Alps called Saudis, and it is very chilly. And I'm excited to show you all this beautiful architecture and natural beauty that this town has to offer. It's also one of the towns that is called the language island, which Mary Jane will tell us a little bit more about, but they speak a very unique language that you can't find anywhere else. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and let's explore the town of Saudis here in Friuli in Italy. So I'm joined by, what a shame, Mary Jane. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Saudis. <laughs> so uh, tell us ge geographically where we're located. Geographically, right so Friuli Venezia Giulia, this region is located at the very northeast of Italy, at the border with Austria and Slovenia. And within this square that is Friuli Venezia Giulia, we are at the very northwest in the town of Saudis, in the Carnic Alps. The Carnic Alps, so yes. interesting. And there's also a dialect or accent to the Carnic. Uh, yes, Alp exactly. Alp Where uh, in Carnia, which is the area of the Carnic Alps, um, people have a very strong identity. They are freelance and they speak the freelance language like we do a little bit further south in Friuli. Yeah. But they have a particular accent and certain particular words that are different. So I speak freelance, but sometimes I cannot understand Carnic freelance, for example. Oh. And that's it. But yeah. although we are in the area of Carnia, this particular town, this particular little area here, has very little to do with Carnia or with Friuli. Because it's very unique. It's very unique. We are fairly close to Austrian to the Austrian border here. Yeah. And this town where less than 400 people currently live has its own language that is a sort of a Germanic language, but it's mixed with element of Friuland language. And I am fluent in German, Friuland, Italian, and I can guarantee you that I do not understand their language. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll hear And maybe at, at the end of yeah. this tour, we're gonna sit down in a place to uh, try some local artisanal beer okay. and usually they have some books where you can read in the local language and we can show it to people oh wonderful wonderful and try to read it and pronounce yeah. it because it's it's right so unique so let's show around and then is friuli in a version of italian that's b griffin is friuli in a version of oh no no yeah. it's something else friuli is a separate language than italian okay so it's different from italian yes so i'm gonna fill my water bottle uh, here after uh, these people are done so let's show around as we're waiting matt hey matt nice to see you here b griffin welcome all right so i end up getting some water at the main town uh where we're staying uh at udine and uh you mentioned that this actually this water bottle comes from over here Yes, yeah. Goccia di Carnia, this, uh, this type of water, the springs are exactly in Carnia, which is this region in the Alps. And it's coming out so cold. Oh yeah, that's very good water. <laughs> mm. Oh wow, it's so refreshing and cold. And of course you can taste that actual mineral water as well. Mm. That's good. This is the European dream, everyone. Unlimited water <laughs> is the European dream. I'm going to fill yes. my other water bottle. And that's the great thing about visiting these areas. <laughs> Natural mineral water on tap. <laughs> <laughs> so let's walk around. Can you spell the other languages? Friulian. So how do you spell that in English? Uh, um, F R I. U L A N, I believe. Okay. Sorry, I'm not very good at spelling in English. Friulan. 
And Saudis, uh, the language of Saudis, we gotta confirm if anyone can search it up exactly what is the Saudis language. The name of the language? Yeah. I'm not, sh I mean, I, I can say it in Italian. It's yeah. Saurino. Saurino. Or at least the inhabitants of this town are called Saurino. Look, there's public transportation. Here we have the confirmation. You can come here via the local SAF is the the bus the bus yeah. of the province of Udine this province here it's incredible I'm, I'm surprised too that public transportation can oh, come cool. to here so you can come from Udine but all the way up to here but it's great because if you live here and you are maybe a kid or a teenager you can go to school no problem right you know right so show the buildings I mean to high school because elementary school is probably here right in the town Oh, sir. So here we have your typical alpine buildings. Yeah, this is the town hall. Municipio. Municipio. Municipio, okay. Mm -hmm. in, in Spanish it's pronounced municipio, so yes. it's a municipal building. Exactly. And Udine sends one bus here every week. <laughs> Who says no, that? Bigger, no, 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 more. Daily, daily. Hey, Paul, nice to see you here. From beautiful Montana, says Victoria. Oof. Ooh, the Rockies. Oh, yeah. Uh, similar vibes from the Rockies as well. Of course, the architecture here is much older, at least some parts, mm. uh, than the Rockies. And ah, nice, unbelievable water. Oh yes. Hello, Mavis from Oregon. Nice to see you here. Oh, this is for for sale. <laughs> Are you thinking about yeah, it? Yeah, this <laughs> seems like a nice area, a nice place. Look, this is Tessitura di Sauris. It yeah. means that this is where they create fabrics. Oh, fabrics, interesting. Mm -hmm. So they create artisanal fabrics. It's a town that really preserved right. their artisanal activities. Wow. Oh, gorgeous. It is actually open. What yeah, time but we'll, is it? Yeah, we'll show it from the outside. Okay. Uh, that's amazing. It's open in case you want to enter later. Love the house, says K. Yeah. So, a little fabric store. Gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I need. A gigantic scarf for how cold it is. <laughs> this is pure merino wool and mohair. Oh, Merino, oh yeah. That's Sheep. really high quality stuff. I have a cardigan thanks to Kay of Merino as well. Wow. So how many times have you been up here? This is probably only the third time. Yeah. It's, uh, how, how long did we take to get here from Udine? Uh, it's an hour, 15 minutes, an hour and a half if you go slow. Okay, so it's not too far, luckily. Well, for yeah. Friuli, which is a limited region in size, it's very far. It's very far, yeah, yeah. I guess for <laughs> yes. Friulians, they don't venture too far out, uh, yeah. all the time at least. But here I notice a lot of um, Austrians and Germans. Yes, through. there is uh, a, a way. We this came way. from Udine, this but way. there is a way yeah. to come from Austria as well. Right. Still, it's quite, it's quite a ride. That's why this place has been able to retain its old language, its old traditions and uh, craftsmanship as well, because it remained quite isolated. Right. Thanks to the geographical elements. So everyone, here's the Alps. So uh, Wendy, no, we are not in the Swiss Alps. We are in the Friulian Alps. And Manuela, very nice. And Matt, thank you so much for tuning in. Marilyn says, wow. Oh, yes. I've done a lot of traveling, but sadly not here. Well, that's why I can show you these beautiful places from the comfort of your own phone. Hello, Loretta. Uh, NW says, it's so nice, like Switzerland. Have you been to Switzerland? Does yes. It, does it share similarities with it? Um, yes. I would say Switzerland has higher mountains. Mm -hmm. Here we are not in the high Alps of this region. We okay. are in the very first ones, which are... Um, 
lower. Okay. Um, but yeah, Swiss and they are a bit steeper, I would say. They are, yeah. Than here. Panajotes, nice to see you here. Hey, hey, Rodriguez. Wendy says, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wendy was joking around that this is the Alps. From Santorini to the Alps in less than two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> About a month, month, yeah. But yes, very close, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or it just was in Capri, so <laughs> this is like the opposite world of Capri in terms of Italy. <laughs> Here is simply in front of us, we have the uh, ski club of oh, Sauris. Oh, that's so cool. So it's not a big piece, but it's good for kids to learn how to ski. Oh, and they take they take a little cart yeah, of it. The ski lift. The, the ski lift, there we go. Would be wonderful to show a map as you travel north. Ah, Victoria, good idea. I wish I had one, but maybe we'll maybe we'll bump into one. As uh, we I think we around. might, yes. Yeah. At a certain point, stick with us. <laughs> stick with us, yeah. Glorious, you're so lucky. Oh yes, I fell a drop on my head. I think it's about to rain. I'm sure, yeah, it's fine. Umbrellas. If it starts, we're gonna go to drink some beer and have some prosciutto di sauris. Ooh, prosciutto di sauris. Um, hey, Susan says it's so beautiful. Oh yes, I'm in love. Alexandra de Puerto Rico, thank you for the tour. Oh, mi placer. Estamos ahora en la Alpas de Italia. So we are right now in the Alps. And genuine Saurino, says uh, <laughs> B. Griffin. Yeah, we're having some genuine Saurino prosciutto later. Uh -huh. And these are yes, the ski exactly. slopes. Yes. Uh, this is like... Because, very small one. Because there's like black diamond, which is like very hard. So oh. in, in ski language, there's yes. a few designations of difficulty yes. the, this would be just a green one which <laughs> yeah. is the entry level <laughs> green, yeah and as you can see here people in the mountains um, have to protect their veggie garden with yeah. a very good because otherwise <laughs> there are t there is too much wild animals that come to eat the plants are we the gonna crops. meet some wolves later uh, maybe have you, Let's ooh. see. Have Maybe. you have you ever met a wolf on no, your? I've never met a wolf. I don't think there are many wolves in Friuli. Okay. We do have occasionally some bears that come here from Slovenia. Yeah. Um, and then we have other animals. Wild like, boar. We do have wild boars, but not in the mountains. It's more down to the hills. Okay. Um, and then we have roe deers. That's one word that I learned. Oh, roe Because I, I only know the, the technical terms in yeah. Italian, you know. Uh, roe deers and what was the other one? Deers. We have deers, of course, on the mm. Alps. They are very common. Where can I eat one? Deers. <laughs> oh, we have a great hunting restaurant. Oh, yeah. Oh, there is. Okay, in, that's In my cool. hometown, <laughs> actually. That's so cool. That's awesome. But deer is very common. Uh, of course, you have to go to a place that serves gamey meat, like yes. wild meat. But it's pretty common in Friuli. And here we have chickens there in the distance. Yes. We'll just, uh, also in the region, it's very common if you have even the tiniest garden, you always plant some veggies. And possibly you keep yeah. a couple of chickens if you can. Wendy says, Ariel, no, don't eat Bambi. I, I'll, do, <laughs> I'll do my best. So we are, you said, um, if anyone could find out the exact elevation of Sauris, but you mentioned that we were 2,000 meters around there, give or take. So anyone, mm, let us I know. I think we are lower here, much lower. Okay, so let us know what the elevation for the town of Sauris is. And I'd love to tell people in feet as well. 2,000 would be on top of the mountains. Okay. We might be around 1,000, 1,500. How gorgeous this church is with this uh, beautiful top that looks very different from from Romanesque churches. Yes, so this top is typical Austrian architecture. Oh, that's why. Yeah. This area used to be Austria back in the days, you know, for centuries it's been Austrian. Mm. So the this type of architectures remained. So B. Griffin found out we are 1,212 meters. Exactly. Yeah. If anyone can translate that into feet, do let us know. It should be a little bit more than 2,000 feet. And Susu says, hey, Ariel and Mary Jane, watching you on the replay this morning since short videos, finally catching you guys live. Yes. Yes. 
And Christoph has the, I think, the name of the architectural element. Zweibelturm. Yes, yeah. very well said. Thank you for the technical term. Zweibelturm means literally in German, uh, onion tower. Onion tower, okay. Yes, because it has, it's a tower that has this onion kind of shape at the top. Yeah. Yes. So it's a, it's a very descriptive kind of term. So right now we are at 3,976 feet, almost 4,000 feet. Mm -hmm. We're taller right now than the tallest mountain in Puerto Rico, Yunque, <laughs> for comparison. And there's an entire like huge spa complex here. So this Wolf, yeah, what's Wolf? is the big uh, place where they produce all the prosciutto and speck. Yes. That sounds so good. And why and is there the have... word spa there? Where is... Oh, spa means... Um, Does it mean something different? It's like a denomination for companies. Co okay, okay, okay. It's like in US you have LTD or something? LLC. Yes, something like that. Okay, so it doesn't mean that there's actual sauna in there. Oh, no, it's not that spa. <laughs> okay. No, okay, no, okay, no. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't think of it. Spa. No, spa means società per azioni. <laughs> Literally, it's something else. So it's LLC in, in, uh, in Italian. Christoph says it's limited, yeah. Um, thank you, Mary Jane, for showing us the best views ever, says Wendy. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy, my yeah. pleasure. So let's show just a little bit here and then we'll backtrack. Okay. Because these houses look so gorgeous. They do, and look how high up the mountain goes in the back. It looks very steep as well. It does, yeah. I wonder if the locals go up there to hike maybe in, in, at sunrise, you know, as yeah. morning routine. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's a great way to see the sunrise. And look <laughs> at these flowers on the balconies. This is very typical everywhere in the Alps mm -hmm. in the summer. People uh, pay a lot of effort to make their balconies look very nice and flowery and tidy as well as well because you can see it's super tidy and organized and i don't know what, why they do this but i think for it, decoration yes uh, like think, uh, americans like to keep the lawn very nice so yes i think this is the mm. just the northern italian version of the lawn yes yes but if you go down from the mountains you don't yeah. see this kind of thing so they're also they collect a lot of firewood Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, all these houses inside have a fireplace for sure. Yeah. So they do have to collect some firewood for the winter. Wendy says, wow, so heavenly. Oh, yes, it is. L look how much firewood here. Yeah. But you will, see, you will see much more in the next houses that we'll see. No, no, look, look, look down there. Look at the huge uh, backyard area. Oh, yeah. Is this one of the Airbnbs you were talking about? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know where they are exactly. And are these local residence dwellings or vacation homes? So there are... There, there are vacation homes there here are. too, yeah. yes. But there's 400 residents here. Yes, a bit less, I think. Mm. Yeah. Susu is also watching the Udine video at the same time. She's oh, wow. watching this. Susu, <laughs> Susu. such a multitasker. <laughs> that is very impressive. <laughs> Susan loves the flowers. Oh, I'm so glad. Let's check out the map. So uh -huh. you can't camp here in this parking lot. But I assume there might be camping areas. Oh. These are the trails. No, right? good. So this is Via delle Mal Malge Carniche. Mm. Malge are those places up, those buildings up on the Alps where cows come up to for pasture in the summer mm. and they usually also make cheese on top of uh, the Alps. So in the summer it's very good thing to go if you have some time around this Malge to just visit them because they are very beautiful places to eat them because very often they offer you some food, they have the agriturismo and to buy some delicious genuine cheese. Oh, that sounds so good. Which you have tried. Yeah, I tried <laughs> earlier this morning. Um, yeah, Mary Jane offered some authentic cheese from this region. Though. 
It's so delicious. It's so unique tasting. I have not tried anything that tastes quite like it. So I was very blown away. Uh, what's the name of the cheese again? Well, sorry, I'm covering the microphone with this. I yeah. didn't realize that. What's um, the name of the cheese again? It's formaggio di malga, which means mm. malga cheese, simply. Malga cheese. It doesn't have a proper name. It's just the important yeah. thing is the place where it's made because um, these cows in the summer are not fed with cereals. They are fed with the fresh grass from the pastures right. up on the Alps. And that's why the cheese come out with such a strong flavor. Yeah, I associate it uh, more with like kind of a uh, bright, it was a very bright flavor. Uh, hmm. So not funky like a, like a goat cheese, but more bright and very interesting, very different flavor from any, anything else. Yeah. So here the map is showing the tour of the Malge that yeah. you, can, you can take this road on the left mm -hmm. and uh, go take this tour and visit them. And this is all cut up into pieces. I wonder why. I think it's just decay. Yeah, I think so. It looks Oops. like they, yeah, looks they like should the, they should change this one. It looks like the US states. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Isn't that near Genoa? No, we're not near Genoa right now. We're on the exactly on the Opposite other side, side of yeah. the north of Italy towards okay. Slovenia. Let's check out this view over here. Lori, thank you so much for the 200 stars. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And Colleen, hello. And Vish says, what a beautiful town. It's surprising to see such a town in Italy. Uh, uh -huh. Is it overcrowded like Switzerland? No, no, this is not a tourist haven. Is, is Switzerland <laughs> overcrowded, really? I assume the Alps are yeah. the skiing areas. Because they are so famous. When someone yeah. says Alps to yeah. someone who is not from the Alps, they yeah. immediately think of Switzerland. Right even if Switzerland doesn't have that much big of a share of Alps. Yes. Like Austria and Italy have a bigger one. So we got a lot of cars around here. Yes, we well, got a lot, of, a lot of cars because this is where you come to buy the local meats, the oh. local products. People here are wearing jackets. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not that it's hot. Chilly. It's chilly. And let's not put away the phone. Uh, the yes. Yeah. I was looking at the, um, if I could see where these um, like vacation houses are. Oh, don't, don't worry about but that. It's, we'll, I we'll couldn't just find enjoy the moment, yeah. <laughs> Wow, beautiful flowers. That's amazing. This is huge, such a gigantic store. <laughs> and here they have the outdoor portion as well. Yeah, uh, they did the outdoor one just for COVID because usually yeah. it's indoors. So I think they just built this one. That's amazing. See people come out with goodies. And then they, there's like a public eating area here. Yes, also. Yeah. All right, let's go inside. I want to try it out. I don't think we can try out products here. No, not try sure, out. But, but, but to, to we see, can show see them. them. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. A pie. Yeah, handmade. Handmade. Oh my god. That's so awesome. I'm gonna look at how rough this pasta looks like. This is good flour. It has a good flour, yeah. It has an amazing texture. Oh now I wish I was staying in this area for a while so I can cook. I'm gonna uh -huh. buy this pie. <laughs> Here is all the polenta, the different flowers to make polenta. Sambuca. <laughs> yeah, this is handmade uh, sauerkraut from here. And, and dried porcini mushrooms. Oh yes, these are porcini, amazing. Right? 
porcini. Porcini. Mm -hmm. That was good. Wow, and those like crunchy. Yeah, I guess some people keep them. And here are all the... Yes. Yeah. Look. If you have the machine at home, you can buy half of a ham and cut it at home. Many and people it's probably do. cheaper to buy it directly oh, from the source. Oh, yeah. definitely, yes. And then we have ganchale. Let's uh, grab that Yes, one. this is ganchale. Which is used to make carbonara. Yes, yeah. this is the cheek part of the pork. Right, the cheek part of the pork. This is so good. <laughs> oh my god. But oh, very okay. uh, strong taste. Whereas pancetta, wait. It's a little bit more. Mm. Oh, this is a huge piece. Lighter taste, yeah. Pancetta, it's a little bit yeah. lighter taste. Yeah. More delicate. More delicate. And this, oh my god. What's that? Oh, this is lard. Pure lard. With oh herbs. God. With herbs, mm -hmm. wow. It's huge and thick. Look how thick this is. <laughs> I love lard. I don't know about you. <laughs> it's heavy, but yeah. it, when combined well, it's a very good dish. And then there is this part, which is sort of a very delicate prosciutto. Yeah. It's fiocco, they call fiocco. it. Oh. Lightly smoked. So it's nice and kind of much more delicate, so it pulls yes. apart. Easier. Yes, and less fatty also. Less it's fatty. more lean meat. Osso collo. Mm. Also lightly smoked. Is this deer? Uh, no, this is still pork. We have lots of pork dishes in Friuli. See all this salami. This is all pork. Ooh. And Ooh. they lightly smoke everything in this town. I can see that. And they can do it very well. <laughs> I, they know what they're doing, you know? <laughs> okay, everyone, maybe if you come to Italy, stay for a few weeks in one single location so you can buy local products and cook at home. Because <laughs> now I wish I could make a pasta carbonara with that pasta they showed me. And the mm -hmm. ganciale, I will 100% do that. <laughs> Il cotto. And Look, here they, we have frico. They even have stinko. How do you call this in English? I don't know how you would call that. It's like the the lower part of the leg of the pork. Oh, I see. Okay. Super delicious. And you can see how rough the polenta is here. This is polenta? Yes, this is it's not... Always hard. You can see it's not very refined. No. The flour has all these um, parts of the corn oh. that some of their flowers just throw away. That's why a lot of people have recommended me to try polenta. Mm -hmm. And frico. Yes, you can buy it already made. Of course, yeah. it's not the same as freshly made. Right, right. But still, if you don't have much time. And then they have yogurt. And this is another typical. Also yes. local? Yes, Ovaro is also in Carnia, in, okay. in this region of Friuli, this area of Friuli. This is cotechino. Yeah. This one is a sort of a sausage. Mm very fatty that you boil in hot water right. and then you cut it in slices oh. and you eat it. It's very fatty, very, it's delicious. This is one of those dishes that you have when it's winter and it's very cold outside and it's Sunday right. and you want something very nourishing, <laughs> let's say. And then the cheese that you mentioned. So yes. Bajo de Marga. This is also the Malga. You can see how yellow this cheese is. It's very yellow, yeah. That's one of those, um, Characteristic of Malga cheese. Right. It's a very. And here cream. we have something typical of Carnia, oh. of this region, which are the chiarsons. Chiarsons, okay. Chiarsons is a sort of a dumpling. And these are made with uh, aromatic herbs, like wild herbs that you find in the lawns in the area. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I want so many things. And then the beer, which we're not going to try uh, later. Ah, yes, yeah. exactly. So, that a beer. this beer This is guy is dressed up as, sorry to interrupt, but he's dressed yeah. up as a little devil. Uh, it's a or folletto. Cornetto, folletto is folletto. called in, okay. in Italian. It's like a devilish little <laughs> creature of the forest. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the like fairy a, tales. Like a fairy. Yes, exactly. Well, fairy the character. More, the mischievous ones. Yes. Yeah. So, Sare beer, I told you earlier that Sare is yeah. the name of this town, right. of Sauris, in the local language. Okay. 
So um, the beer that they make here is pretty famous. They make a normal blonde one. Um, integrale means whole, like it's whole beer. So it's not heavily filtered or anything like that. Mm. And they also make a smoked one. Because oh. they, they are very good at smoking techniques in I'm the gonna town. Try, I'm going to try later the smoking one. Um, the smoked beer, that sounds interesting. And we have grappa and... Oh, what is this? Uh, this nectar. is... Yes. Of you raspberry. can probably... Uh, nectar di frutta. You can probably ah. make a drink with it. Oh, you take one spoon of this, yeah. you fill a bottle with water, and yeah. you make it refreshing drink wow. for the summer. Oh, they have the smaller versions of the pies. Yeah. I'm going to actually... I'm going to actually take the smaller one. I want to try it later. I want to try it now, actually. So th that was so, strawberry, which uh, is strawberry. Is this is uh, hazelnut and chocolate cream. This is um, blueberry. What's local to the area? What, what berry? Blueberry is definitely local. Mm. Albicopca is not very local. Okay, of the mountains. Your fragola is local. Uh, fragola might be local as well. Blueberry is the most local thing then. On the mountains, yes, but oh. it's fine. Okay, we're going to try blueberry. Oh, that's so cool. And the cookies. Okay, so anything else to try that would be a good snack to show people? Good snack? Yeah. Ooh. Or oh, this, maybe. This could be a good snack. Like, this is frico, the same one that we saw. This is yeah. another version which is crunchy. Oh. It's made only with cheese, no potatoes. Oh. It's basically awesome. crunchy fried cheese. Okay. Something like that. We'll try that. We could have it with the beard. It's a nice accompaniment. And then, um, what's this? This juice? This is a squeezed oh, whole this is apple. apple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me pay and uh, take people outside for a little bit. Okay. I take them outside? Yeah, take them outside. Oh, nice. What an honor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can finally take my mask off. Hey. I'm wondering what you people would Grazie like mille. to try Grazie if you were here. Um, if you are spoon? here to this place, no. we saw uh, so many spoon. different foods or a fork and uh, ah, okay. and drinks as well. Ah, uh, see, sí. so even the beer. So, which one Grazie of mille. all these products that we showed you? Would you try? <laughs> Charles asked, I'm Mary wondering Jane. if the Italians have a word in their language for diet. <laughs> it's called dieta and we don't like it. We don't like that word. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a taste, uh, a taste and then we'll, we'll have more beer later. Let's try it out. So let's put the camera right down here. And let's frame it with the Alps, yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Nice view. Well, we'll do it. We'll do a selfie mode, actually, just to make it easier. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my God. <laughs> this is probably the most epic view I've had so far for a taste testing. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's not like a city, like a uh, nature. <laughs> I, I think, to be honest, the yeah. best thing of this yeah. is to feel that you are eating products that have been produced, grown from zero, from scratch here. Right. You know, nothing is imported, nothing comes from the other side of the world. It's everything here. Cool. So this is not made with 37 ingredients, <laughs> no, like it's Wonder not. Bread. We can read the ingredients. <laughs> it has literally Ingredients, Three. formaggio, it's Just literally one, <laughs> actually, <laughs> cheese. <laughs> one ingredient, let me show it to you. We'll try the meats later, meats and beer later. Yes. I just wanted to grab something quick to show you here. Formaggio, look at that. One ingredient, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we'll grab a few bites of the uh, frico. Here, feel free to grab one. Thank you. These are literally the smallest bites. We usually have these as an appetizer or as a um, little snack, or they are very good 
accompanied by wine or beer usually. So, Trader Joe's in America I is know. making this now. I saw it. <laughs> but I... it has like five ingredients because they add uh, salt and preservatives. Oh, okay, okay. It. And a little bit of sugar, just as a tiny sprinkling of, of corn syrup. I, I saw it too, and I was like, <laughs> what freak on New York City? Let's try it out. Wow. Hmm? What do you think? Okay, no offense. Trader Giotto, <laughs> like they say the Italian right. version. No offense, Trader Giotto, <laughs> but this is way better. <laughs> I would I would take this over Trader Giotto any day. <laughs> it's very good. It's um it's very funky. Now I finally had that funky cheese taste because I've been wanting that taste of very funky cheese. Oh my god! Which we I... may try more later, uh, fresh. I should mm. take you to have frico like the real uh, frico, not the snack version. One more. Yeah. Mm. So, funky, very crunchy, like a potato chip. It's very airy inside, so mm -hmm. it's kind of a thick potato chip. Mm -hmm. And would you have this as a normal snack, as a friolian? Mm, no. No. Mm. It's more specific. Because it's quite heavy, you know, all, all the traditional dishes of this region right. were made for people who would work the fields all day or climb the mountains all day for work. So they would come back and have this, but we don't climb the mountains as much anymore. So we don't have this <laughs> normally. We would have this if we have friends over or yeah. something like that, not as a daily snack. <laughs> so I'm going to take this home. I'm going to take this with me <laughs> for a uh, snack later at night. But I have to, to accompany it with some beer or wine, <laughs> which, I'll, which I'll do. Uh, go anywhere, you two. We want to see it all, says Kirk Flo. <laughs> what kind of cheese is it? Oh, you mean? Yeah. Um, we don't really have names for cheese here in Friuli. It's just Latteria. So this is usually made with a cheese that has has been, how do you say, stagionato, aged for quite a few months. So it's yeah. it's not like it's definitely more than four months, I would say. Right, and you can see how you know this is. Four months, four months old cheese. It definitely has a funky no, taste to it. No, more than four months. Okay. Very often we mix several different cheeses. Mm -hmm. Like it's the same time. It's just uh, you let it age more or less, like longer or shorter. Um, mm. It definitely has that funky taste to it. Mm. The, the, I would say yeah. t ten months at least to make something like this. But maybe there is, you know, they mix a little bit of five months one oh, okay. because it enriches the flavor. Just to get the right balance. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So let's try the pie. I am a huge fan of pie, so I'm excited to try, which here in Italy, there's barely pie. It's not really a pie culture. You know, you haven't found it maybe because yeah. it's very traditional. It's something that you make at home usually. Oh. You don't really buy it into restaurants or in shops. Okay. So yeah, it's a very rustic kind of, especially because Usually, we always have the garden at home with yeah. veggies and some fruit trees. And so when in the summer we have this huge fruit production, we cannot eat all the fruits fresh. So we make jams with them, right. right, with the excess. And then you have all these jams, you don't know what to do with them. So we make these kind of pies that are called crostata in Italian. And that's why they are very homey kind of dessert. So Mary Jane surprised me earlier uh, this morning where we had a, a variety of different jams. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we just got it from here, <laughs> from the backyard. Yeah, it was. they were all jams, homemade yeah. by my family from the family garden. That, that blew I, my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best jams I've tried, the, especially the sour... The blackberry one you like very much. Sour right? blackberry one, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yep. right. All right, let's show the pie. So that means I gotta make more friends with uh, Italian nonnas so I can eat this more often. Yes. All right, Italian nonnas, where are you at? Let me, let me know. Should so I cut it? This. Yeah, let's cut it so we can actually show a cross section on autonomy. I mean, uh, autopsy. Oh so my it's, god. It's definitely crusty. It is very crusty. Can you smell it? I can smell it already. Mm. Even if it's a dry kind of dessert. It's very aromatic, uh, yeah. Yes, you can you can smell also the butter of the dough. That's a very good butter. Yes. That they're using. 
I mean, they have the animals here, yeah. you know? So it must be <laughs> a great butter. Okay, that's it. Wow. Okay, let's One lift. and yeah. two. Let's lift it up. There we go. Let's see, show how crusty it is. Okay. Windy. All right, look at that. Wow. Okay, actually, this is better. Wow, yes. look at that. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> that looks so good. Oh, and I I'm think so we, I think we chose the blackberry jam one. We chose blueberry. Yeah, the blueberry. Yeah. Because blueberries is something that you usually find up in the mountains, so mm -hmm. it's really um, they were probably uh, harvested here. Picked <laughs> right literally. here. Yes, and then made jam, and then made the <laughs> the dessert. And buttered from the very udders of the cows that were <laughs> coming up here at the Magala. Malga, yes, Malga. exactly. Malga. Right. Well, cheers. Cheers, salute. <laughs> oh, the smell of this. Oh, mmm. Mm. Oh, wow. Not sugary at all. They are not depending at all on adding sugar. All the emphasis is on this crust, which is very good. It's like a graham cracker cut crust, but a little bit more buttery, a little bit more homemade taste. It's super crusty. So this is not American style where you have a, a, ten, a, a lot of fruit and syrup. Um, but that crustiness with the blueberries, the blueberries are very fragrant. It's really, really good. I mean, you can wow. see again the flower, wow. the type of flower. I don't know if it's going to focus. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. And it's too close. No. But the type of flour is um, not very refined, mm -hmm. which gives to the dough a richer flavor, in my opinion, right? And it's healthier yes. because you have a little bit more fiber and less raw sugar. <laughs> it got better after I swallowed. It, I just felt all the buttery goodness. You just. Know? overwhelm my taste buds. That's how wow. you understand when a food is really good, at least in Italy. For us Italians, when the, the flavor develops within the whole experience of biting into something till after you swallow it. Right. If the flavor de develops, that means that it's good quality food. If it's a flat flavor, it's usually industrial. Yes, yeah. Wow, I'm gonna have one more bite before we continue. Damn, that try try wolf. Wolf? How do I pronounce it? In, in wolf. Wolf. Mm. Try wolf here in um, Saudi if you can. Or the in the Friolian area. This is among the better pies I've had. The crust just falls apart so perfectly. Mm. And it's um just the quality of butter. It's really good. It's super creamy. Mmm. I'm in love. This is this is uh, amazing. With these views, <laughs> mm, I just feel like yodeling right now <laughs> for all the <laughs> mitzvah. <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> right, precisely. See, Mary Jane is also an expert yodeler. <laughs> yeah, sure. That was a painful attempt. Uh, no, a painful, uh, pinely, um, embarrassing attempt. Or, as the Italians like to say, when something's good. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We do. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do the, the, the. Okay, wait. You have to add a spin to it. You have to add a spin to it. There we go. <laughs> and that's. that's <laughs> the, you don't even need to say oh, any we words. Do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to take this. I'm going to enjoy this later tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have a nice late night snack. Would you trade New York cheesecake with this pie? It's like comparing apples and oranges. Yeah. But pie for me, 100%. Any pie. I love pie. To me, I, I can live off of pie if I wanted to. And um, to me, it's the perfect pastry. Meat pies, savory pies, sweet pies, any type of pie. Give me all the pies. Ah, yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> so we found the perfect, 
Perfect mm -hmm. place. All right, now let's continue on. Christoph says, great entertainment. Please taste the cheese, says Chris. We will, uh, once we get mm -hmm. to the beer place. Yeah. Maybe in Stick 20 or so minutes. And let me drink some water because that pie is very uh, intense in terms of the butteriness. Mm, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you are climbing these mountains, taking a herd of cows all around, and the storm is about to come, and you're needing some sustenance that will last you the entire night, oh, bite into that pie, because that pie will make you filled up for all the storm to pass by. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Wendy says, oh my God, LOL, we are turning Ariel into a uh, eater uh, where we pay, pay him to eat. Yes, mukbangs, <laughs> everyone. Who does a mukbang with the, with the Alps behind them? Come on, Chinese mukbangers. You see Chinese mukbangers doing this? No, so come on. <laughs> give us, give, give us the, the, the few millions. <laughs> Who is she? This is what a shame Mary Jane on YouTube. Check her out. Uh, vlogger and traveler. <laughs> All right, let's walk around. I can take care of this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right over there. How high are the highest peaks? Higher, so um, as you mentioned, uh, they go up to probably 2,000 meters. 2,000 meters or so, yeah. Seiyan says, what a great narration. I'm so glad you enjoy it. I need pie now, says Susie. Guinness and steak pie would be ready. Oh, okay. I'm so excited. This is, is this a little bit more similar to Ireland? Do let me know. Well, I'm not sure if Ireland has gigantic mountains. I have a feeling with the chilliness is a little bit more closer to Ireland. Currently says, I remember Mary Jane from AK's videos. Oh, I'm so glad. What does it smell like here? Let's go. Hmm. It smells like a cold breeze. Let's go through here. Go this way. <laughs> we have to go down there though. Yeah, 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 let's go this way. What a city boy. He likes the asphalt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so much uh, climbing for me. It's urbanist, not the mountain climber channel. You are very much right. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the church. Yes. How deep the, oh, so the smell. Hmm, the smell smells like the morning mist after a stormy day and that shepherd that was venturing high into the mountains woke up still belly full of pie, hearing the clattering of the cow bells and the wind rustling through the pines of the alpine trees. That's how it smells like. That's awesome <laughs> do, do to, to, so? to hear this from an external person. Because <laughs> to me, this, is, this just smells like Alps and okay. I would not be able to describe it. <laughs> okay. It's just Alps. You have to come here and experience it. <laughs> it's such a fresh, clean air. Seyan says, this is such excellent scenery. And Kay says, yes, we have mountains. And Greg said, did I smoke this morning? No, I'm just high on alpine air. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Kat says, you're doing such an amazing job. I'm so glad you enjoy it, Kat. Let's check out this. Hey, live streaming is being broadcasted on three different platforms. It is indeed Saramore. Thank you so much, Saramore, for tuning in. 
Lara, it indeed we are in high in altitude. Oh, what does that translate? Excuse me, what does that translate to? Um, let's honor the memory operating for the peace, in justice, and in love. Hmm. This is a monument, like a memorial from Saudi, Saudis to its um, people who died in the war. Oh, in the war, yeah, because they were defending These were the all invasion. soldiers. Yeah. And um, many ask, do they drink hot wine here during the winter, mold? Wine. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Look at this beautiful mural. Let's check this, check this out yeah. first. The great English poets. Oh my God. Byron, Keats and Shelley all fell in love with Italy. Now we have Ariel. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Aside of that, you see this little thing? I don't know who wrote this, but <laughs> they are like little poems or aphorisms. Oh. Like, I can translate maybe yeah. a couple for yeah. you. Yeah, do it, yeah. This one says, Non sprecare la vita nei rimpianti. Do not waste your life into regrets. Oh. Do not waste your life into regrets. Oh, I love that. Ogni fiore è un'anima che sboccia nella natura. Every flower is a soul that blooms in nature. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, this, this is very philosophical. I like this very much. Accetta come dono qualunque giorno voglia donarti la sorte. Accept as a gift whatever um, day, whatever type of day the fate wants to donate to you. Oh, live by faith. That's amazing. Good advice. Just accept whatever happens. <laughs> I think Kat says very beautiful sayings, yeah. Emani, si yo beben vino caliente aquí en los inviernos. The bambini trabajan. The kids find everything in the nothing. The adults find nothing in the everything. Oh, wonderful. And this is the veggie garden of Grandma Licha. It says on a sign here. <laughs> so thank you, Grandma Licha, for keeping such a beautiful garden. It's gorgeous. Did you tell Grandma Licha that I was coming because of the yeah, urbanist of orange it's flowers? All, all planned. Oh, thank you Look so much. Look at so much orange. Mary Jane is a great host. <laughs> <laughs> she contacted the Sorino people. We're like, we need orange flowers now. <laughs> <laughs> Mikel says it's a farmer poet. Yes. Well, I'm not, we're not sure if uh, it's by the farmer themselves or Proverbs. Yeah, I honestly don't know, but I think it's a great idea. It's so beautiful. It's not happy who has it all. It's happy who can find everything in every day, in the everyday life. Yeah. It was a bad translation, sorry. <laughs> but you, you got the concept, I hope. Flowers and vegetables, a perfect cottage garden, says. Yes. Oof. Kinathus. Radici profonde non gelano mai. This means deep roots yeah. never gets fro get frozen. Oh. So this is a very uh, good metaphor with gardening and yeah. life, right? Yeah, right. Because gardening, the deeper the roots, the less vulnerable they are to the external cold. Interesting. Diego Montagnier, art. Nice job, Diego. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job. It seems like this might have been an old lookout point, maybe. What do you think this was? Let us know in the comments. Or it might be an uh, electrical substation. This is, yeah, this is an electrical kind of tower. And this work is entitled Innovation and Future. The kids symbolize the innovation and the stars in which they are submerged. Yeah. Their vision of a 
um, bright and happy future. Oh, it's nice, the kids look in wonderment at all the galaxies. Oh my God, this, is, this kid is holding a very old wooden toy, typical of the Friulan farmer tradition. Oh, yeah? It's amazing to see it here. It, you spin it like this, yeah. and it makes a, like some kind of a noise. Oh, okay, okay. And here. You hear the sound of the clanking cowbells. At the rooster. At the rooster as well. The music of the Alpine. <laughs> the, late ro the rooster is late. Yeah, it's a rooster. It's a n the night owl equivalent of a rooster. Yeah. Oh my God! Now that's getting sunny. <laughs> Look at this. Oh wow. This is a thumbnail shot. Oh my <laughs> God! All right, let's do a thumbnail shot over here. Where? <laughs> Screenshot material, yeah. So what other activities would you do here? In Saudis? Yeah, in Saudis. When you used to visit. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. just... <laughs> That's kind of a funny question to a freelan or an Italian in general, because yeah. The, the normal activity that you do anywhere in Italy is go chat with your friends or with any local that you find and eat and drink. Okay. So every time I came here, I was eating and drinking. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> we eat and drink all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're a bit boring. Um, Chris would be skiing, says Chris. Skiing. Very picturesque village in the Alps, says Adam. Oh, yes. This is Europe, the best places, says Teco. Yeah. This is the library and uh, historiographic center. History center, how do you say? Kat says, eating and drinking sounds like a perfect combination for me. Yep, <laughs> and good company. Jaou says nothing boring about eating and drinking and chatting with friends. <laughs> Look at this, wow. There's the entrance. Yes. Let's hope it's open. Ooh, some old ancient graffiti from 2020. <laughs> no, it's the older 1750 something. 1753, 1962, 1730, wow. That's very old. Yeah. Uh, Quite impressive. And they decide to just keep this little part. I honestly <laughs> don't know what's the story behind this patch. That's fascinating. Beautiful cross says Chris, yes. Look at and this here, house. Here are the stained glass windows. Ooh. And uh, Roslyn, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. It's so nice to see the non-touristy parts, Ariel, says Trisha. Yeah, Trisha, it's a beautiful way, oh, beautiful place to I'm see. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, um, so everyone send stars, I mean hearts to Mary Jane. Slam that heart button for Mary Jane for showing us places like these all around <laughs> Udine. You've been so kind and showing us all around these beautiful areas. Of course, it's, a, it's been serious. a real pleasure. Yeah, yeah.
Thank you so much. So this type of house is also a very particular kind of architecture. Okay. You can see that there is um, this kind of structure kind of thing, yeah. which was used to um, hang veggies or agricultural products to dry for the oh, winter. For the winter. Oh, and then they would dry and have... You see you know, in this kind of... Um, yeah. These horizontal structures. Oh, I see. Uh, a few people are asking, does it snow a lot here in the winter? Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, it's already chilly here. It should be about... That's where 70... the cows were. Yeah, that's where we they are. We found them. <laughs> it's about um, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little bit less. It's breezy. Charles says, go to Trieste, the most famous writer of all time, James Joyce, moved there and lived there for the rest of his life. Paul, thank you so much for the 200 stars. Yeah, everyone, uh, Facebook is doubling again. If we reach 75,000 stars by September, they are doubling it again. So send over stars, and then uh, your stars are basically counting as double for this month, once again. Hello, Ariel, nice to see you. Welcome to the Alps of Italy. The Friuli Alps. Susie says, my kind of weather. Oh yeah, Susie. It's nice and cool here today. Beautiful decorated house and it seems like the man might be a sculptor. And the church is open. All right, let's pop in. Oh. More old graffiti, look at this. 1704, 1724, 1722. Hey, Ariel, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you. So kind of you, my uh, father's tuning in right now. Gave a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. All right. The Church of San Lorenzo. Let's go inside.
Wow, that was an immensely beautiful church here in the middle of the Alps. Absolutely mind-blowing and very uh, beautifully, extravagantly detailed and decorated for being at such a humble place. And uh, as for writing, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was uh, trying to hold the camera and also not cause the entire thing to spin away. So that's why I was writing that way. Uh, look at the, we can see the lake that we were at earlier. And the entire ski slope as well. Oh yeah, we the can see the- top of the closest mountain. It goes even higher. Can you ski from all the way up there? No, I don't think no. so. I mean, if you want to walk with your skis on your shoulders. Yes, yes, yes maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> That's, it's called alpine ski. Alpine. That type, al alpine ski. Okay. Right? Alpine yeah. ski? Yeah. And look at these gorgeous gardens. They are so tidy and mm -hmm. it's, it's almost as if they were making them to deco decorate the place rather than to grow veggies. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Also, they have so many flowers. So Lorraine, thank you so much for the stars as well, and Ariel too. So that was the lake from the previous video. Check it out, where people were zip lining. We could actually see the zip line from this distance. Mm -hmm. Mani dice, solo se falta una vaquita. Uh, all we need is a little cow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I love that. Who said that? Many. 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 Well ah, said. Eso sí es bien correcto, sí. Todo que se necesita una vaquita. Y puede ser que, que vamos a comer un poco de queso pronto. It's, we're going to eat some cheese soon. You see this... Uh, tower bells of the churches back in the days when people didn't really have watches yet yeah. and they wouldn't go to the field to work with their fancy pocket watch even if they had one um, this was very good to let them understand what time it is yeah so right. now it just rang six six times which means it's, it's six o'clock okay it rang six times so it tells you the time it is yes oh. Even far in the distance, if you're working in a field that it's far away, you can hear it. And then you'll know, oh, it's that time. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we've been live for an hour, so we heard it towards the beginning of the broadcast. So yeah. it rang five times. Exactly. The okay. And then sometimes at the half hour, it rings only once. <laughs> That's funny. They do half hour. Poor residents, they have to hear that all, all day long. Oh, you get used to it. Yes. I, I moved several times in Italy, and for some reason I was always right next to a tower bell mm -hmm. and i mean the, the few days that you sleep in a new place with a new tower bell you kind of wake up but then you just get used to it and you don't hear it anymore <laughs> that's wonderful hey jk welcome let's go walk let's go, in yeah. the town because yeah. the architectures it's that amazing. you're gonna see are gonna be very interesting i almost don't want Oof. to leave the view is uh, amazing I know. Oh, now we this know where video. there was a dead rat, and now we know why there was a dead rat. <laughs> this little guy over here. Did you ever do a video from here? Me? Yeah. No. No? I have so much to cover in Friuli still. <laughs> you do? Yeah. This is gorgeous.
JK says, wow, beautiful mountains. I love the bells. Yeah. Look at this sculpture. Some this is, sculptures here. Can you understand? It's like the, the Virgin Mary that holds Jesus. I think this is very beautiful, minimalistic kind of sculpture. People really do have the craft. They do. Look at that. The mailbox. Yeah. This also is handmade for sure. Nice. Aromatic plants. What plants are those? Paul says, who needs Rome or Florence? <laughs> well, you can have this. <laughs> well, I agree with you. <laughs> That's what I say. Also. Why do tourists always go to Florence and Rome when there are, there are so many beautiful places in every corner of Italy? Teco says, this can't be compared to New York. Well, New York, we do have the Catskills, um, but you don't see towns like these. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't vastly explored the Catskills, but I don't think there's that many towns in the Catskills. No, we don't have like this immense beauty that you can walk around also in the town mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, the U.S. And here we have another, I don't think it's the same, example of Valser House. I think this is called Valser, this type of architecture yeah. that is um, typical more of the central Europe mm -hmm. in of the houses of the mountains. And it's very functional, you know, to hang things to dry and stuff like that made of wood as you can see right and all of this wood being stored just in case for the winter time yeah and here in saudi they store the wood sometimes in they are very tidy at storing yeah. the wood sometimes they do even sort of decorations within storing the woods so we're gonna see uh -huh. them for sure oh wonderful cake fakes oh so cake fakes says there are some gorgeous towns and the Catskills like Roxbury. Ooh, thank you. Roxbury? Now, now I'm curious. Yeah, oh, when I go back to New York, I need to visit it. Look at this. Uh, a fresco. Um, this is from 1710, this fresco. Can you point out which is the Saudi language? Saudi. Oh, yes. This one is uh, the language, the local language, or this one, this one is the same. So you can see, the prima iuli in inferiori sauris. Not the right moment, we have people passing by. Hang, hang your... Are we hearing Saudi? Saudi? Yes. No, that's Italian. Okay. Yeah, with a certain accent, but it's Italian. Okay, yes. okay. Anc iconem curavit perfici Dominus Jacobus sordus unacum Oswald miniger in gratiarum actionem. I am very sorry for the pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm just improvising now. It almost sounds like Latin. The, there are very big elements of Latin, but yeah. also very big elements of German language. Mm -hmm. Christine, thank you so much for 50 stars. Mighty Bull, nice to see you here. Mary Jane, will you come to Bulgaria? Will you go to Bulgaria? Yeah, I always yeah. wanted to go to Bulgaria. I'm going to make it there one day. Yeah, that would <laughs> be awesome. So right there. And this is from 17... Yes. Wow. Amazing. So cool that they preserved that. Yes. I love also to see this kind of, um, you see these walls where yeah. they show the stones? Yeah. Because this one is uh, plastered on top 
but this one I think it, it makes it so, look so rustic with the wooden balconies. And it's very common in Italy, unlike the U.S., to use the local building materials. Yes. So they use the stone that you can get it from this very mountain. Yes. Yeah, or the wood that you can get from these very exactly. trees. Exactly. Unlike in the U.S. where we tend to you know, bring... Import. Import a lot of things from all around the States. Mm -hmm. oh, here's another one. Yes. Oh. Can you tell us which one is this one from? Yes, we have another, another panel. panel. Oh, this is second half of 18th century. Wow. Latter half of the 1800s. 18th century, so 1700s. So this wow. is the, the shepherds um, visiting Jesus who were just was just born. Is this a public house? This is a No, this is a um, private. See, Petrisata. <laughs> I would do a um, bench test, but this is a private bench. Like, is it yes, it's private. If I private. find a public bench, I'll do a bench test. Penajota says, go to Greece as well. Sorry, to, to go to Greece. Greece. I've been to Greece five times already in my life, and oh. I love it, and I miss it very much. Also, uh -huh. oh, you see, I mean, well, it looks very bad here because yeah. they're probably throwing it away. But this is, um, and cucina economica we call it, which probably <laughs> uh, Spanish-speaking people yeah. will understand me. Economic kitchen, so. Don't mind this upper part, but this lower part is very common in houses all over Friuli and all over north of Italy, I would say. Mm -hmm. You put here, you make the fire with the wood, mm. and this warms up this entire thing. So here is, so this warms up the entire kitchen and living room, yeah. so the main um, room of the house where everyone hangs out. So usually the bedrooms traditionally are kept cold in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's kind of uncomfortable to, to go to sleep. <laughs> and then here you have the oven if you want to bake cakes or bread. Or and on crostini. top of the, what is it called, the, the pies? Uh, la crostata. crostata, yes, exactly. Crostata. And then here, this metal uh, plate on top, yeah. well, it's like stove it's like a stove you can boil water for pasta usually there is also a like a hole here where yeah. there's always a pot of hot water ready t for tea or to put in a bottle to warm you up underneath the blanket and mm. stuff like that oh interesting to warm you up underneath yeah. the blanket because so, it gets very cold yeah so yeah. it's like um with this little bit of burning wood yeah you create this heat that is that serves so many d different functionalities. Oh, fascinating. That's fascinating. the concept. It's a great tool. And you make polenta on top of this as well. Because yeah. there are sort of um, uh, pl plates of metal that yeah. you can take out from the upper plate and you can put the copper pot to make polenta, kind of stuck it inside the fire. Oh, so yeah. it's closer to the fire yeah. and you can easier um, mix it with this wooden tool because polenta is kind of hard to mix it's a lot of uh, <laughs> shoulder and arm work <laughs> that's why the italian nonas are very well built oh yes <laughs> um thank you so much mighty bull for the five dollar super chat i appreciate you and mighty bull said that he's seen a few bulls in the imagery yeah i guess so and uh, well, also because we're we're in cattle country we're close by and it provides heat and you can also cook says maria indeed you can exactly and wendy says interesting cool and panajota says fascinating and my grandfather was making these heaters says maria oh cool oh, yes. you made those heaters sandy sent 200 stars thank you so much for 200 stars sandy All right, everyone, right now at this very moment in time, 
If you want to see us continue and show beer and cheese, slam that like button at this very moment in time. And the reason I'm saying that is because Facebook has, n or YouTube, sorry, now, YT has no idea what this place is. Um, not that many people are searching for Saudis and, and Friuli on YouTube yet. Uh, so they don't know who to show it to. You guys, since you're so hardcore viewers, you're getting it, you're able to see it. But for the other urbanists out there who would love to see Saudis, but YT is just not showing it to them, not sending them the notification, uh, do them a favor, slam that like button. Also benefits you because you end up seeing other similar videos like this. There's probably other vloggers who exp explored these areas as well. And then on Facebook, share this with relevant Facebook groups. So any groups that are relevant about history, uh, travel, or Italy, or Alpine areas, feel free to share it with them. All right, now we have the gardens. <laughs> They are so well maintained, right? Look how many flowers we have in this little corner. Yeah, so many and flowers. And this is just, you know, decorative for the people. They don't do this for tourists or f to show off. I, I wonder if they have like local competitions because a few of them are, are pretty nice. But Maybe. even then, it's probably not a big competition. <laughs> Uh, Rene says, uh, thank you so much for a super chat for this, this Chilean 1,900 pesos. Uh, papal bulls, ooh, I'm not sure. I don't think the Catholic Church was so entrenched into this area. Good stew. Oh, wow. Yeah, that dog is hungry. Mmm. Oh, wow. Someone is making a great stew. A what? A stew. Yes. Yes. Ooh. It's okay, dog. <laughs> we come in peace. <laughs> and we have a hotel here. I wonder how... Well, we can take the stairs from here, probably. And Nissan says, where are you going to dinner? Oh, soon. Oh, Ooh, what is that smell? Oh my god. I gotta take photos here as well. Oh, it smells like the best stew. Mmm. Downstairs? Okay. Let's show just a little bit over here. Mmm, is it coming from inside here? Christy, what is it here? Just after six. Lentil soup. No, it smells like a stew. Someone's making yeah. some type of meat, uh, meat stew. Mm -hmm. Might be this restaurant here preparing for the evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like your video in Sorrento, says uh, Speran Sperancino. Thank you so much. Can you broadcast this? No, I'll do my best this way. Here is also a pretty nice view of the church there. This house also, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing, at least in my opinion, Indeed, I like yeah. it very much. It's truly mind blowing. I'm coming back here to take a photo. Look at the green <laughs> of that lawn there. Oh, so bright. Marianne, thank you so much for 500 stars. Is you going to bike ride in the Alps? Asked George, do you, or do you ever bike in the Alps? Question to me? Yeah. 
No, I, I'm not able to, but I go hiking in the Alps very much. I love hiking. You do? Nice. We're getting bitten by mosquitoes. Are you? I am, yeah, I think of it because there's a sewer right out here. <laughs> Random sewer. Stay away from sewers if you won't get bitten. That is one of the most beautiful smells. <laughs> the alpine breeze with the smell of stew. Oh, that's the kitchen. <laughs> that's the oh. oh, okay, now I know where it's coming from. Mm. Look, it's, it's right here. Uh, that's, where it's coming. <laughs> that's intense. Psst, some stew, please. <laughs> How do look, I say stew in Spanish? Look in, all these uh, aromatic Italian. herbs they have. They probably cook with these ones. This is, uh, how is this called? Salvia. Salvi? No, that's German. Salvia. Salvia is, is very different. It's a uh, Mexican psychedelic. No, it's, um, you know, hippies nowadays burn this also. To, to get high? No, no, just to as oh, a ritual. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about uh, sage. Sage, exactly. Sage. Sage. Salvia is very different. Sorry, yes. salvia is the name in Italian. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you is. have mint there, and here is lavender. Lavender. So right there, right there. Sorry, we'll show it in a bit. That piping hot too. How do I say stew in Italian? Stufato. Stufato, per favore. <laughs> Stufato, per favore. Signore. Stufato. So this is lavender, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, George says, yes, you can smoke sage too. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never tried it, but yes, you can. Oof. Look at the lighting in that corner. Lightning? The, the light right oh. now in that corner, photographer would go crazy for it, I think. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a, a, a video photo right here. A bit hazy today. It's not hazy, right? Not as hazy as you. So B. Griffin just mentioned that what it's a bit hazy. What is hazy? Hazy means that. Like misty? Mist, foggy. No, not so much today. I think we're a little lucky. Uh, we're very lucky. The thing is, these are also big and far, and, and it's also a cool breeze, so there might be yeah. a little bit of moisture in the air. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Matt says it's Friuli style beef stew. So is there a Friuli style beef stew that you had? Um, we don't use much beef meat. Which way do you want to go? Either here or down here, I would say. And which way is the, um, the For place? For drinking? Yeah. It's there. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go directly there. <laughs> yeah, we don't use, we use traditionally we use, we have cows, but we use them mostly for milk to okay. make cheese. And then only when they are really old uh, that they are not able to produce any milk anymore, we butcher them and take the meat. Mm. And the meat of an old cow, it's much more tender than the meat of a calf. Mm. So the, it's usually much more delicious. For Chris says he, it looks very similar to his area, local area in Veneto. Veneto. No, oh, um, what's the, the area called? We're very close to Veneto. Very close, yeah. Uh oh. All the people must be hiding. Well, it's a small town, so <laughs> people are working, some of them. Yeah. Maybe they're just... Look at this beautiful pattern. That is a very beautiful pattern. Now they don't have much decorations with the firewood, but usually it's sort of like this, you know, uh, further on in the season, because now they are still, you know, it's still summer, so you don't need firewood. 
yeah. towards the end of the summer. They start piling it up for the winter and they make all these decorations like this. They're pretty amazing to watch, to yeah. look at. Was that a uh, lawnmower? No, I think it's more for tilling soil. That, that one, yes, machine, yeah. exactly. Oh, look we have how one. many artisanal stavolo. Here we have again the local language. This is for, uh, was built in the first years of the 20th century. Oh, wow. Early 1900s. And um, the, the down, or oh, how do you say, ground level. The ground level mm. used to be the place for animals. Right. Stalla in Italian. I don't know how, what's the name in English. Um, and then, and it's made of stone. Mm. because at that point, you know, you always have the problems of fires, risk of fires yeah. if you build with wood, which you have plenty of wood here in, on the mountains. So people tend to build the base, at least, of stone, and then the upper part of wood. So if a fire had to occur, at least you are left with one floor of house. Yeah. And you can rebuild the upper part. That's the concept. Uh, also because the um, upper levels, they used to be used as a storage for hay. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy that they would get lit and start a fire. Oh, so at that point they would say, okay, let's build everything of wood upstairs and if it takes fire we are gonna just rebuild it right, right. but at least we have you know the ground floor <laughs> and this middle one is uh suarino um no this is German. this one is it's, um the local language <laughs> um so uh, you can if there is anyone who knows german you can hear a lot of German. Er ist bird aufgemachtet, aufgemachtet, sorry. Mm. Which like, it's like aufgemacht in German, which means built. Mitten kovlen und mime gehilse arme ohne wacken wame the year. And this is saying, um, uh, this um, building is built at the beginning of the last century um, with stone and wood. Mm -hmm. And if you know German, you can get something of that here. Right. But it's very strange. Yeah. It's such an unusual language. I think it's amazing that it still it exists. It's mutually intelligible from German. It's like uh, Portuguese and Spanish, even though they are similar, you can't fully understand both. I don't think, <laughs> I mean, I'm fluent in German, and yeah. honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to understand. If I just had this, this text, I wouldn't be able to understand what is written. And JK says, um, oh, the 30 minutes. Again? Yeah. Oh, yes. 30 minutes. Uh, JK says, why Deutsch? Why, um, why German? Oh, because we are very close to the uh, Austrian board border here. Mm. So if there are Austrian people who come visit the town, they have the translation in Austrian. And here mm. is in Italian. <laughs> no English. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, look at the beautiful arrangement of flowers right here. Hola, nomades. Bienvenidos. Okay, now I'm getting hungry. So let's show some food. Look at these beautiful, wow. That's craftsmanship. And we have other things here. Que hermoso, hermoso lugar. Parece de cuentos, nomades. Nomades said, what a beautiful location. It almost looks out of fairy tales. Si, sí, eh, bien hermoso. Y si, sí, se ve como, como la, los cuentos de niños. Uh, in Alemania, uh, yes, the German fairy tales. It feels mm -hmm. like that a little yes. bit. Yes. Like uh, red, 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 red Riding Hood as well. Oh, 
Hi, Irene. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Wendy. Welcome. Bienvenuti. Bienvenuto. You see what they do with, with the firewood? Let's check it out, yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. This is the model of one of these malgas that are up here yeah. in the mountain. Oh, it's a mountain um, Yes, so you can actually, cottage. oh, wow, you, we can actually explain yeah. how these malgae are. So there is usually, um, let's start from this building. Mm -hmm. This long building is where the animals spend the night, usually. A stable. Yeah. Stable, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then there is, right next to it, to it another building where the Malgaro, which is the person who goes there and spends the summer with the cows and makes the cheese and everything, lives. There is probably a very, very frugal uh, corner of it with some kind of bed or something. <laughs> and then you can see inside that there is the area where there is the fire. Yes, yeah. from here you can see it where they warm up the milk in order to make the cheese. Oh, I see. And then they put the cheese there to season. Oh, fascinating. And to then, season it. Yes. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and then people who go to the mountains to visit, like me, when I go hiking, I usually stop after I hike, before I go home, I stop into a malga yeah. and I buy some malga cheese. Oh. which is very unique. You cannot Malga. buy Malga cheese in normal shops. Yeah, yeah. You imagine. have to go to this place. Not in the U.S. It's ra rarely imported, exported. Yeah, no, not even here. Not if even you here. go to Udina, you cannot have <laughs> Malga cheese. Oh, fascinating. Okay. You have to hike up to the Malga. <laughs> so here are all the firewood. Sweet small details, says JK. Yeah, very beautiful small details. And George says, how about Amazon? <laughs> uh, yes, <yeah>, sure. <laughs> Luckily, Amazon is not everywhere in the world yet. <laughs> yeah. And Irene says, did you cross the border to Austria? No, I'm still in Italy. No, yeah. yeah. It looks like Austria. I think there is a legend that says that this town was founded by in probably in the 13th century um, I might be wrong mm. but it was founded by two Austrian soldiers that escaped from the war they were tired of the war so they escaped from the <laughs> army they came here and founded this uh, town oh I don't know if it's a legend or it has some historical I love that they, they just yeah. got tired of, of all the the terrible things they were experiencing and just decided yeah. to escape from it all and go into the mountains. And that's the story of many mountain villages, is escaping from the oppressive nature of civilization. Mm -hmm. Heavy governments, dictators, wars, mm -hmm. taxes. And that's why these mountain towns always have this kind of, kind of different culture to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They have their own language, their own style. And this is the place we're heading to? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So you can look around for a table that you like. Ooh, that would be great, yeah. We'll try to optimize and see if we can find... Look by the grass, it's great. This is the place we're heading to. Are we buying a house here, says it all. <laughs> yes, the urbanist retreat. <laughs> okay, let's go by the grass. Okay. Yeah, the table by the grass. I'm just going to say that we are there. Okay. Irene, my ancestors came from Austria. Oh, they did. That's amazing.
Lativa, frontal. Lativa, frontal. Para que el cuadro de asito todo lo hiciera. We got it? Cool. Yes. Awesome. There's a nice girl who is coming to take our order. Okay, wonderful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great view. Uh -oh. This has been etched into the, the ground. <laughs> We still live? We are, yeah. People are still joining. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, we got even more people coming in. Uh, we gotta get a table for 362 plus 45. We gotta get a table for 400. Yeah, you think that's they, doable. That's think doable. they can accommodate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have to pay extra for the view? <laughs> no, this is not the US. <laughs> well said. <laughs> there, there's not a surcharge for everything. The only thing you might encounter is the Cuperto. How do I pronounce yes. it? Yes, Coperto. Exactly. Coperto. And uh, give us a very brief explanation of what the Coperto is as we show the views. Uh, then we'll Coper the camera. Coperto is usually a very small amount of money that you pay per person if you sit mm. down at a restaurant. It's usually from one euro to two euros. You might find more in their touristy areas because. Uh, restaurateurs take advantage of t uh, unaware tourists. <laughs> yes, yes, and then they charge a cuperto for like six euros. Yeah, yeah, but it's usually between one and two euros, and it's simply because in Italy y they set the table up for you. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a cloth, tablecloth, and you have a basket with bread and grissini, and that's it. Yeah. It's and just then you are just paying the service that you're sitting down at the table and you know they have to wash all your um, napkins they also have very often uh, uh, cloth napkins <laughs> that depends yeah but the touristy areas not uh, the touristy no. areas for sure <laughs> they're still charging you a coperto but they don't have cloth na yeah. napkins <laughs> i don't see the portraits of italy on your site says cat so yeah, I'll be adding Italian photos very soon. Oh wow, those are amazing views right behind us. Uh, I'll be adding Italian photos soon on, on Dark Room. Stay tuned. And it's like a cover charge. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna move a little bit of the setting. Yeah. Feel free to chat with uh, the viewers. Oh, Ariel is tidying up the tables for us, <laughs> for you to have a better view. That was nice. Good move. <laughs> I like it much better right now. Yeah, yeah, we're surrounded by beauty at this very moment in time. <laughs> um, so there's authentic things here to try that you can't find anywhere else, right? Oh, yes. You mean products? Yeah. Like food and drinks? Food, food, food like a, uh, a place like this. Yes, we are definitely going to get a plate of cold cut, char charcuterie. Is it called like that? Affettati in Italian. Affettati, okay. Affettati. <laughs> in, in, the, in America, we, I, think, I think we usually pronounce it cacciuteri. 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 Yeah. At least in America, yeah. But yes, we're having a, a selection of cold cuts. Yes, yeah. that are produced here. So the animals are raised here and then they're mm. butchered and, you know, uh, cured here. Ah, okay. And I think all of them are lightly smoked. That's a, a kind of a typical thing of this area, that mm. they lightly smoke everything. Oh, I'm so excited. And uh. then the beer, we need to try the artisanal beer that they make here. Yeah. It's called Tsare beer. And who makes them, the Zadevir? Uh, is it from uh, distillers or mon monks are not making this one? No, it's just no. The, okay. the people. Okay, the people, people okay. of the okay. area, yes. Because you, in some places in Italy, you can find Benedictine monks making beer. But oh, yeah. This is not the region, I think no, it's more towards the center. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we don't have monks or or. Um, I'm surprised there's no mo no monasteries we pass by. Oh well, there yeah. there are few in other mm. areas. Okay. I don't think there are in Carnia, but on in the Julian Alps there are. There is the Abbazia di, di Maggio, for example. Yeah. Um, 
that's pretty much it. <laughs> Not that I think of it on the mountains. <laughs> then we have, you know, in the area of Collio, which is yeah. the wine producing area per excellence in Friuli. Uh, which is uh, at the border with Slovenia. Oh, okay. So we are here in the west of Friuli, that one is in the east of Friuli. Mm. There is the famous Abbazia di Rosazzo, mm. which is a very beautiful place to visit also, on the hills. Is Catholicism the main religion in this area as Assam? Definitely. The cake fake, yes. yes. Yeah, you really won't find Protestantism here. Uh, that's why the, the country's lines are where they are is during the Protestant Reformation was one of the factors as why we have different countries uh, Austria versus Italy versus uh, Germany etc so uh, that had played a factor and Ariel got me thinking about pine stew oh yeah <laughs> Susie I'm so glad it's so cloudy in New York City, I'm jealous as a Janice. Yeah, we end up getting good weather today. The sun is Such shining. Such an amazing weather, we were very lucky. <laughs> and thank you, Matt, for posting a lot of extra information, I appreciate that. Hello, Janice, hope all is well. Inwood, Manhattan, uh, pork, lamb? We're having mostly pork yes. um, cold cuts. Yes. Make sure to try the local cheese. Yeah, we're gonna order cheese yes. as well. <laughs> Your dinner is coming behind you. Was there, was there a cow passing by? <laughs> um, she had the idea to change places? No, this was our, always our intention to come here, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Change for, uh, from what original plan? And yes, the prosciutto de Sauris is smoked prosciutto, mm -hmm. says Sol. And uh, someone earlier said that y you have inspired them to take a road trip here from Veneto. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, Chris. please come. Yeah. Please come, Chris. I don't think lamb would make good cold cuts. There's not that much lamb. I don't think. I've never heard of it. In general, I have nine counter lamb meats. Yes, here. exactly. Um, lost my connection. Hey, nice to see you here, Susan. Welcome. There's lots of... We have horse cold cuts. Mm -hmm. Besides of pork, we, we eat a lot of pork in Friuli. Um, especially all the cold cuts are... Yeah, the sun is in your eye. Oh, no. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm enjoying it. So, <laughs> it's quite chilly here. Yeah. You might be surprised. It's, um, you know, it, I mean, my hands are a bit cold, for example. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have some sunshine uh, touch some my skin. Some beer will warm you up. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. Do but you need suntan lotion? Just in case. No? Definitely okay. not. Okay. Look, cool. okay. I was sunburned until yesterday because I went yeah. hiking in these Alps, actually, right. in the Karnik Alps, three days ago, and I was for seven or eight hours under the sun. It was all exposed, you know? Usually mm. when you go hiking, you have certain parts that are in the forest. Yeah. That one was all exposed. Rocks and very little bushes. So I got all sunburned. Oh, no. <laughs> so this sun is nothing in comparison. <laughs> That's why you're super tan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so feel free to ask any questions whatsoever. Uh, remember, Austria was ruled by the Habsburgs, who were once the Spanish royals. And yes, they were definitely Catholic. Oh, thank you so much, B. Griffin. Very Catholic. I thought you changed the place of the restaurant, another table with a better view. No, no, there's just not that many restaurants here. How many do you think there are in I this town? I honestly don't know. I've there's been that. only to this one. There is a hotel. The hotel one we saw. There is the, the shop of the Wolf. The Which you can have uh, a few bites, but it's not that extensive. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't seem too many, so maybe maybe a handful of places here. And my family is from Cuomo, uh, from Uno. Cuneo? Cuneo. 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 It's, um, Cuneo is in Lombardy. Oh my God. Lombardy or Piedmont? I think it's Lombardy. Ah. I'm, I'm very sorry. It's right there at the border, I think, between <laughs> two regions. My Let's ignorance in geography. Let's, embarrassed. let's play challenge uh, no. Mary Jane's <laughs> geographical knowledge. No, please, no. <laughs> Just I, ask me about Italian regional food. Yes, yes. Then yes. I can answer. <laughs> so let's uh, grab the waiter's attention when we uh, when yes, he passes. Yes, I asked yeah. her. I think there are not as many people yeah. working, so imagine. they're struggling. Ooh. Also, I should have brought jeans. So pro tip, if you're coming here, uh, wear longer pants 
and wear a thicker shirt because it is pretty, uh, a bit chilly. It's a bit nippy, <laughs> as they say in the U.S. Do you um, know a place uh, called Gati? No, I have not encountered one, Gail, but I will ask Mary Jane. Danielle says, Grazi tutti. Uh, welcome to the Alpine villages with its own language, says B. Griffin. Oh, yes, Gabriela. Bienvenidos. Bienvenuti. And planning a trip to Slovenia? I would love to visit Slovenia, especially a restaurant that's located in a log cabin, which I was telling you about earlier in the middle of the mountains of Slovenia and they only allow two or three parties at the same time to go to this Michelin rated restaurant <laughs> that was featured in Chef's Table. I would love to have that type of dining experience. It'll probably be one of the best stews I would have in my life. And um, I w I'm very curious about Slovenia. It's a country I heard so many great things about, especially due to its natural beauty. Uh, and also I heard that the main city is very beautiful as well. How did you get here? Transportation? No, Mary Jane is fast and furious at the helm of the wheel. <laughs> so this usually takes about an hour and a half to get here, but we got here in flat 30 minutes. No, <laughs> uh, but, but you do love driving, right? Yeah, I do yeah. love driving, but I had yeah. to go so slow for Ariel because I know that yeah. he's American. He's not used to fast, yeah. fast Italian driving, yeah. <laughs> so I had to slow down for you. <laughs> Um, Bled, Slovenia is beautiful. Bled, ooh, wow. Yes, it's a Sounds quite like touristy place in Slovenia. They have thermal uh, baths, how do you say? Like terms ooh, and yeah, the yeah. spa. Yeah, you said it right. A beautiful yeah, lake. Um, Christine says, oh my God, I love, I love this view. I'm so glad you do. Um, it, someone earlier asked, um, Gail asked, do you know of a town called Gati? Gatti? Yeah. Like G-A-T-I? G-A-T-T-I. So, Gatti. 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 So, here, no. in, here in Italy, always pronounce the double letters. They, do, they pronounce each of the double letters. Yes. Yeah. So, if you have a double D or a double T, you usually pronounce yeah. it. So, there is a difference between Gatti and Gatti. Yeah. Gatti, Gatti. <laughs> Two different <laughs> words for us. <laughs> right. And yeah, the person standing behind us was just a, a random person uh, from the restaurant. Oh, you didn't even see that. Uh, Vlad says from Austria, welcome. Hello, Lamard. You're looking very nice with the mountains behind you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's very nice with the mountains behind us. I'm so excited to try this out. The ski slope is right there. We're just waiting for a waiter. It seems like there's a lot of people coming in right now. How high are the mountains? These mountains are 3,900 plus feet tall. Italian is pretty phonetic, yes. Once you learn the phonemes of Italian, then it starts getting more phonetic. And Southeast is an attitude about, um, altitude about 4,000 feet, yeah. And uh, Mary Jane, your, your mic is hot, by the way. Is? Hot, that means it's on. So leave it over here if you do chatting. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, the waitress is coming. Yes. I'm so, I'm so eager for food. Yeah, yeah. I, will, I didn't take it off earlier when yeah, no I went worries. to ask, so no sorry. <laughs> Just don't go to the bathroom with that. <laughs> no, no, I would never do that. <laughs> I just asked if she was going to do table service or not. Okay, yeah. and also don't call your bank. Yes, with that. <laughs> I will keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, it's because uh, we're both wearing uh, microphones right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> and it's wireless. <laughs> JK says, fast, come back. <laughs> the one waitress in town. Yes, we have yes, the one waitress more in or town. less, exactly. She's, she's waiting for all the different restaurants here. Ariel, now I can't imagine you returning to New York. I see you won as the European. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Maybe I'll, I'll follow the lifestyle of George Clooney and just uh, stay here year-round. Also, another one is Stanley Kubrick, the director who made uh, Clockwork Orange and so many great films. Uh, he fell in love with London and UK so much that he just stayed in the UK. And his last film, Eyes Wide Shut, 
took place in New York City, and he literally recreated New York City in London. <laughs> because oh he didn't want God, to. He didn't want to go back. I didn't know. <laughs> he didn't like flying, so he didn't want to fly back. Uh-huh. <laughs> so maybe I'll do that. <laughs> uh, what age group are are people living here? I see a lot of people who are elderly walking around, or not elderly, but uh, yeah. um, sixty-five plus. I mean. <laughs> but we see. We see a few people in their in their seventies and eighties as well walking yeah. around. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't know. That's an interesting question, though. I yeah. would like to know if there are you know younger families living here, so for future generations to keep living in this place. I know that um, in the fifties the population here mm. was double as it is right now. Mm. So it was about eight hundred people. Now it's about four hundred. But it's been stable in the past few decades. So that's a good sign, I think, because in other towns, yeah. in you know, mountainous areas and et cetera, in Friuli, the population kept going down till the early 2000s at least. Yeah, it just disappears. Yes, and many towns just were just abandoned. Towns that mm-hmm. until 70 years ago, they were full of life. And here we saw a school earlier. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely kids here. Yeah. If there's a school. And the school seem like they, they use it. And uh, Mikael says, my shirt doesn't fit with the landscape. No, I, I, ha- I do have two or three shirts that are a little bit more alpine. But no, yeah, I'm wearing a very tropical <laughs> shirt. Yeah. What about this? Do you like this color? Does it fit with the landscape? That is a nice, yeah. That, that contrasts with the landscape uh, better. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone can make men's shirts that are alpine florals, please do. I don't know why all the florals are, are always tropical. I want some alpine florals. <laughs> <laughs> like that garden we saw. Just take a photo and put it on a, on a huge shirt. So Danielle says with, the, with 5G internet coming out or, or other methods like uh, the global link that Elon Musk is working on, people will be able to remote work in mountain villages and continue their lives. That's yeah. exactly what I'm, what I'm hoping for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to be honest, already now, I could work, for example, I'm also a YouTuber like Ariel, and I can work from home as long as I have internet and a yeah. computer. Right. Or, sorry, um, <laughs> microphone. And already right now, for the infrastructure of internet that there is, I could work in a town like this. Mm. So I also hope that there will be more people like us that choose jobs that are not related to a specific um, location necessarily, right. so that they can also populate places like this one. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Mm. It's, it's very nice. Because you, you have to think that back in the days, if you were living here, you were stuck here. Yeah. But nowadays with the car, you know, you can live here, but whenever you want, you can take trips. You can mm-hmm. go to the city. You can spend the weekend with your friends, just drinking at bars and stuff like that. It's nice. It's not a lifestyle meant for everyone. No, um, absolutely. But there, I've met a few people in New York and other major cities like London, where they really want to live that rural lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But all the jobs are in major cities, especially more modern jobs. You know, if you, if you don't want to be a farmer, if you don't want to be a log worker, there's so many beautiful jobs in these rural areas, but if you don't want to do those rural jobs, you're usually relegated to going to a major city or some type of major town. But I think uh, things, but things are changing. Things started to change yeah. with the pandemic also. Yeah. That's one of the good things that the pandemic brought, that um, it allowed more people to do smart working right. and to show to the employers that it is possible to do smart working. Right. Uh, I wonder if it might become more romantic because uh, you won't be tied to a place, says Jasmine, moving forward. That people can live anywhere, anytime that they want. Similar like the writers uh, or the painters of the early 20th century. Of course, you usually didn't have to stick to any individual location. You can literally be anywhere. Where's the grub, uh, <laughs> says George. Well, here I don't expect super fast service. Uh, oh. George is referring to Rome, where we had terribly so slow service. But for a city, uh, city I expect quicker service here. Well, it's yeah, but a, this is taking very long. 
It's uh. just that I called the girl already to, twice. Yeah. And she was like, yes, yes. So I don't want to go a third time. She, <laughs> right. She's going to spit in our <laughs> No, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't think anyone would ever do that. Does that uh, but I don't want to, uh, to stress people out. Right, so right. Let's, let's just be patient. <laughs> right. I mean, these views are, are worth it, though. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, a peak sticking out here. They're slaughtering the pig as, as we speak. Yes, they are. And they're, 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 they're um, uh, brewing the beer as we know it. <laughs> They're actually fermenting the actual wheat <laughs> with their bare hands. <laughs> Maybe you could get your own food. I got the pie, so <laughs> right. we, could, we could share that pie if worse comes to worse. Let me show you the little that's sticking out here. Do you know what peak that, that is? I have Does it have no a name? Idea. I don't even oh. have the map of this area. They're punching the cows right now and tenderizing the meat, says George. Yes. Someone wrote the rural list? Yes. Sorry, but I just read that comment. Cake fake indeed. This is the special rural list spin-off episode. The I am going to get Mary Jane <laughs> to make a spin-off show, the rural list. <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to pronounce multiple times throughout an episode. <laughs> but yeah, you can go to the rural list coming out soon. And then also I gotta find someone who's passionate about suburbs. So the suburbanist. <laughs> well, we'll find a suburbanist out there. <laughs> I'm expanding, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, the organic food, yes. The waitress is scared of the camera. I don't think she knows. All right. All right. Ciao. Tranquillo, ho visto tanta gente. Allora, questo lo postiamo momentaneamente. Okay, grazie. Grazie. Prego, ditemi. Allora, beer. Which beer do you... Che no. tipo di birra avete? Allora, la bionda, l'ambrata, okay. se no in bottiglia, o alla canapa, affumicata e rossa. Or in bottle, they have uh, canapa? No, the draft. Okay, yeah. draft. Beer. Amber or blonde? Blonde. Bionda. Ok. L'ambrata è tanto pesante? Uh, diciamo, no, alla fine sono, cambia il gusto, è un po' sì. più marognola, okay. ma come grado alcolico siamo lì. Allora, una bionda e un'ambrata per me. Ok, piccole tutte e due. And then let's all order the no, food grande, already. e poi yeah. mangiamo anche. Yeah. Ok, quindi, allora, due birre medie, una bionda e un'ambrata. Sì. Ok. E poi, avete un piatto di affettati misti del, sì, di Sauris? Sì, specchio o crudo? Cioè, speck e crudo, tutti assieme. Possiamo fare tutti e due assieme? Sì, 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 sì. assolutamente. Perfetto. So, speck e prosciutto. Let's do both. Yeah, yeah both. But, e yeah. qualche formaggio? Certo, sì. Ok. Lo metto? Sì. Ok. Avete and anche... Bread? Eh, un po' di pane? Ah, sì, sì, lo portiamo. Ok. okay. okay. Um, then, avete uh, anche qualche verdurina sotto olio? No, sotto... no. 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 Ok. Uh, acqua cassata. Acqua cassata. Porto un litro o mezzo? Un litro. Un litro. Yeah. litro. Ok, posso così? Sì, grazie. Grazie a voi. That was it, right? Yes. And then we'll try the smoked beer. Do they have the smoked beer? Yes, but you said you wanted the blonde one. No, no, after, after. Oh, wow, after. yes. <laughs> You're yeah. going to do that because I have to drive. You have to drive. Okay, mm -hmm. so when she comes back with the food, order just the smoked beer right away. Okay. If you can, in Italian. Okay. So, we can, so we don't need to wait too long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can try it immediately. Um, Okay. So, so you want two beers right away or you want yeah. to just take it home? No, no. Because it comes in a bottle. No, no, to try it right away. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. For, for, for the video. Drunk Ariel. It's for the video. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't eat for pleasure. This you is, eat for this, the people, this for is, the audience. I, this is for the people, right? Oh my God, people. Uh, how do I say uh, for the people in, in Italian? Per il popolo. Per il popolo. There we go. That's for the people, ladies and gentlemen. I don't eat for pleasure. I don't drink for pleasure. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm going to have two oh, beers people. for all of you. Your creator loves you so much. <laughs> I would not yes. do that for my audience. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I just, I just thought why the blonde first, because I did not want to drink something smoky first. Mm. Smoky sounds like something the second. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, SPQR, yes, SPQR. Okay, I gotta go to the bathroom. So, ask Mary Jane any questions about being a local Friulian. Um, so, about Friuli, the region, um, what to see here, how to travel here. Do ask Mary Jane anything about Friuli. So, All right. take the mantle. Turn that on, off. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here so you have double mic. You're gonna be in stereo. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> 
move out. <laughs> I'll be back. Don't forget the mic, yes. And then uh, if she comes, order the smoke. The beer. smoke one, okay. All right. Where were you born, Mary Jane? So I was born this. Uh? You don't worry. You don't need to answer any personal questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No to, problem. Okay. No it's problem. Okay. okay, thanks. Uh, I was born in Udine, so that's the city where me and Ariel were yesterday night. Ariel did a live stream, so if you haven't checked it out, uh, please do, because it's a very nice little non-touristy off the beaten path city. Uh, Chris asks, does Friuli has a special pizza? <laughs> That's a, a bit of a funny question. So there is this stereotype around the world that pizza is an Italian food, which is true. You can find pizza all over Italy, but it's actually typical more of the area of Naples and Rome. Whereas in the north, pizza was imported through America. So uh, emigrants, Italian emigrants from the areas of Naples, for example, they emigrated to America and then they exported pizza there. That became popular there. And then pizza came to the north of Italy uh, from there. <laughs> so please don't come to the north and expect pizza to be the food that you have to try because we have traditional foods that are not pizza but we have amazing pizzas here and uh, for example here in Friuli if I want to go eat a good unique pizza I would go to Colloredo di Monte Albano to a pizzeria called Alle Antiche Scuderie where the owner has experimented for a long time with different types of flowers to make a lighter dough and the dough is amazing so for Italians it's very important that the pizza is light and it's very easily digestible and so he created this kind of mix and he lets it ferment not ferment uh, rise leaven I think that's the right name in English I hope for two days and that's very important because if it leavens before you eat it it's not gonna leaven in your stomach when you go to sleep after dinner Harry, the name of that, re you mean this restaurant or the pizza one? The pizza one is Alle Antiche Scuderie. This one is called Cursal, with the K, Cursal and double A. Adrian, oh, very interesting question. Has your opinion of the Friuli region changed after having lived in New York City? Yes, the feeling definitely changed for the better. <laughs> so I'm much more affectionate to my home region right now. Um, you know, it's, it's very common among people to realize that when you leave your home place, your place of birth where you grew up, mm -hmm. you start appreciating it for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me as well. I found Friuli such a non-interesting, non-beautiful region gr by growing up just because it's not touristy. Really? So the way the way people <laughs> see us from yeah. from outside wow. is Whoa. that we are not Venice, we are not Rome, we are not Tuscany, you know? This uh but we are just this is very good competition against Tuscany. Yeah, I very think good competition. We just have less marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> but it's right. not like we are uglier. <laughs> right. No. No, I yeah. mean there are places around the world where you can't say you can't say it's Tuscany. Can't compete. Mm, mm. This is not one of them. No, not okay. at all. Okay. Not at all. Uh, and yeah, I assume you changed that perspective. Yes, yeah. definitely. Your audience was asking me very interesting questions. So, good job. <laughs> I was enjoying it. Oh, great. <laughs> I enjoyed being alone with your audience for a moment. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all the yeah. interesting questions. The Urbanist community, community is very good at uh, asking very interesting yes. questions. What cuisine is in this area? Uh, they had uh, frico with polenta. Yeah, so frico, you can find it everywhere in Friuli. It's like the symbol dish of Friuli. And it's a, sort of a pie made of cheese and potatoes sometimes you can find also onions it's okay. optional i'm gonna order that when she comes to try it out uh, i don't know if they have it here they have it on the menu in the front 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's that specifically fecal polenta. We should we should definitely get okay. it then. So also because the that. polenta yeah. that they have here, I think it's very genuine and and good, mm -hmm. as we saw in the shop earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so polenta is also kind of the basis of the food here. Bread was not really a thing back mm -hmm. in the days. Um, polenta was the bread of freelance. So we would eat polenta with everything, with meat, with cheese, alone even, in the milk for breakfast, stuff like that. Right. Um, then other, okay, of the, of the carnia. Oh, okay. Carnia. The food is coming. Grazie. Grazie. Allora. E ti chiediamo anche uh, una affumicata, una birra affumicata. Sì. E da un... 0,75 e da 0,3. Uh, the small one, piccolo. small one, da zero tre, e poi un frico con polenta. Va bene. Grazie. Okay. All right, so the, yeah, that's the entire spread we're, we're doing. So this is a two-course meal. Um, oh my God, so excited for this. Wait, 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 let's, uh, let's show it with the okay. views over here first, this way. Wow, so this is the spread we're having here. Um, I think the beers got mixed up. This yes. is blonde, right? Okay. So we have blonde beer and the amber beer. That's not American service, remember. Yeah. You have to sort out the beers by yes. yourself. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it's not self-service, but sort yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then here we have the prosciutto and the beautiful cheese, the formaggio, right? And speck. And speck. Ooh. And some pieces of bread. Oh my God, and look at this beer. Oh. Shall oh. we try it? Yeah, cheers. Toast wow. to everyone. <laughs> wow, that looks amazing. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> I was really craving a beer. Oh, wow, yes, <laughs> it does smell very good. Hmm. Mm. Super refreshing. This amber one is is really something. Yeah, this one this one's refreshing, more brighter, and um, blonde sometimes could taste notes of fruit, but this one not so much. This one has more notes of. It's a bit hoppy. Hoppy. Hoppy, so they have hops, mm -hmm. or maybe they have hops, but there's a little bit of bitterness to it. I cannot yeah. tell you, honestly, I yeah. don't know. Uh, so jealous of you guys right now, says uh, Susan. Uh, you yeah. should be Susan, but <laughs> we're doing this also for you. <laughs> uh, speck is a German word, like bacon, says... Uh, uh, no, it's not bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the, the word is... It, it, uh, oh, no, okay, never mind. So uh, speck is... Um, It's a so, sorry to interrupt, yes. a few people said to chug. So, I know you're joking around, but in, in Italy, people will look at you very weird if you do that. It's, that's something you do a college <laughs> dorm in the US. But I don't think even teenagers do that here, right? Unless yes, if they're really they, partying. They, they yeah. can do it if they're but partying, not, of course. But not in the restaurant But like yeah, this. Yes, yeah. It, we, we like to sip on things and really enjoy them right. slowly and calmly. <laughs> right. So, okay, explain what speck is. So, speck is... Um, Let's point out which one it is. So, I'm going to take it with my hands. We got to dig out the speck. You see that it's more smoked here, and it's also spiced. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, they use a, um, a big amount of pepper. Also, so it's stronger flavor and it's a bit drier than prosciutto. And it's um, translucent. So it seems like there's two different types. There's speck and there's speck, as you pronounced it. Oh, uh, no. In Italian pronunciation would be speck. The German pronunciation would be speck. Speck, okay. It's just because we are so close to Austria, I was using the German pronunciation, but it's, it's really the same. <laughs> And um, George says you have very good modeling skills with the ham. Yes. 
That was a very good technique of what? showing oh. the hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's try out the spec first. Let me pull okay. out. Which one's which? Is this one, right? This one. Okay. And this one, you see that it's <clears throat> more fatty, the ham. <clears throat> mm. Ooh. It does smell like bacon. It has a bacon smell to it. <laughs> oh. Mmm, mm, well, it's smooth as butter. Do you like it or not? I do like it. Mmm. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone who's fans of Mark Weems, but I don't do the Mark Weems look all the time. What's the Mark, Mark Weens? Mark Weens is an amazing vlogger. Uh, he's, he's a very mm. great guy. Uh, the expression he shows is when he bites to most foods. <laughs> 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 and sometimes people expect that. It's like, Ariel, you don't like it? Um, I experienced that a lot in uh, Greece as well. You don't like it? It's like, oh. <laughs> um, si, grazie. Grazie. Ooh. Mm. Frico has arrived. Oh my god. Frico with polenta. <laughs> That's so good. All right, let's show that. I'm so excited to try the polenta here. I usually am not. Me too. I'm usually not like super hyped for polenta. We have a little bit. But si since we are in this location, I have to have polenta. So which one's frico, which one's polenta? This one that I'm moving is polenta. Okay. This one on the bottom is frico. Frico. You can see the uh, fried cheese here that is sticking out. The rest oh, yeah. is potatoes and cheese, that's all. Mm. And it's a, quite a long process because you have to... Mm -hmm. It's um, different... To, at least three types of different cheeses of different ages right. usually we use and then we cut them in small cubes. And then first of all, and same for potatoes, you have to cut them in small cubes, same amount of potato and cheese usually. And then you fry the potatoes in the pan for a long time, like half an hour until they are nice and, and um, cooked. Yeah. And then you add all the cubes of cheese and the cheese has to melt slowly mm. while you keep stirring it. So it takes a long time to make. Um, and oh, then time you That's start good. with the yeah. with the wooden sp spatula. You start kind of kneading mm -hmm. this sort of dough, and when it's well combined, the two ingredients, you let it flatten on the surface of the pan, and then you let it uh, form a little bit of a crust. So a few people are asking, is it warm? Yes, yes, okay. it's warm. Let's it's try warm. It out. It's warm in my cold hands, okay. so it's very nice, uh, <laughs> nice sensation. That's why you're explaining it in the extravagant detail. Uh, to keep it more in my hands, <laughs> <your> hand. <laughs> to warm them up. Uh, okay, so we're going to eat this immediately, then we'll continue on and try yes. the prosciutto and the cheese. Uh, Nina says, you sound like a cook, Mary Jane. Yeah. Well, I am a cook. I love cooking. Oh, cool. I love it. I don't make frico very often because in my family, my brother is the expert one. He makes amazing frico. So we have a bee that really wants the beer. Oh, he likes <laughs> beer. That's so cool. <laughs> Barry, the beer drinking bee. So there are so many different versions of frico. Yeah. Don't think that this is the standard one. Just like we tried the, the frico chips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this bee really wants some uh, action. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, wow. Mmm, <laughs> smells like a very cheesy pasta. Mm. <laughs> wow. Oh. Pretty good frico. This one has onion, which I like. It's so hearty, especially for this very cold day. 
Uh, very cold very, day now. <laughs> very fr freezing. Mm, you know, this is I, polenta. When Sorry. I when I said that I'm coming out to the Alps to to escape from the heat, I didn't know it was gonna be this cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm near shivering, but maybe the beer and the food will warm me up, and that's why this is so hearty. I think this could warm you up even yeah. in the coldest of nights. All right, let's try this out. Oh. Oh yes! Mm. Oh yes! <laughs> it tastes like um uh corn. It is corn. It is corn. Interesting. It's just corn, water, and salt. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm. It's a corn patty. Oh wow. my god! Look again, polenta. So many different types. Yeah. Both for the flour and both for the process of making it. Mm -hmm. This one is exactly the one I like because it's very, you can see that the, cor the cornmeal is very rough. Mm -hmm. It's not very refined, so right. it has so much flavor. <clears throat> oh. This is one of the best polentas I've ever had. And as we were driving here, we passed uh, a few cornfields. So, mm -hmm. and Kay says you need <clears throat> a good stew to warm you up. So, Italian cuisine, usually the stews will start being served at around 7.30 p.m. It's a bit too... To, um, 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 shooing away the bee. Um, it's a bit too early for stews, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would totally eat a stew right at this moment in time. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That frico is like buying a New York City pizza and you have the cheese stuck to the carton and you're so hungry that you pull out the cheese from the carton and it has that kind of very thick taste because it just gobbled up all in one single location that's how that tastes like oh wow that's amazing <laughs> you never have you had that experience mm -hmm. of the cheese kind of uh unfortunately when it's not delivered so well the cheese kind of just goes on to one side mm. wow What's the temperature here? I think now it's going down into the 65, 65, 67. Yeah. <clears throat> Nina, thank Ciao. you so much for the 100 stars. I appreciate it. Mm, this is um, one of the most interesting things I've tasted. So try Frico if you come here, when you come here to Friuli. Highly, highly recommend this. This is great, great combination. Mm. Very good. Oh, this beer. Oof. This beer is amazing. The amber one. Woo. Right. And look at what we have here. We have um, sparkling water from the region as well. A huge gigantic bottle of it. From actually this area of the region. <laughs> From this, specifically so this area. Yeah. It's Carnia. Can, can I get Frico in New York City? No, the closest you can get to Frico is fried cheese from the Hispanic Caribbeans. It's the closest thing you can get, I think, to Frico. Though mm. Frico has a little, it's not so fried. It's just lightly fried on like um, Spanish, I mean, Port Puerto Rican or Dominican fried cheese. So I think that's the closest you can get. Maybe there is a other ethnicity that has um, something similar. Yeah, okay. Ciao, Ava. Ciao. Okay, so before we continue, let's uh, try the prosciutto and the cheese. Mm -hmm. And we'll give our final impressions at the end of this uh, video. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we got a lot of bread. So let's try the prosciutto. Which one's prosciutto? The more fatty one. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one. Mm. All yours. Let me swallow the frico. Okay. Is the beer Italian? It's Italian, yeah, it's from this local no, region. No, it's from this town. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> they mm, artisanally make it here. Uh, Nina says the hills are alive with music. Indeed it is, indeed it is. All right, let's try this out. Mmm. 
Mm. It has a very different taste from the prosciutto we had earlier. Mm. We should explain what prosciutto we had because we were not live. Yeah, so we had a prosciutto in the beautiful town of San Daniele. Mm -hmm. And that one was very buttery smooth, very soft. We have a... Um, Hmm. What type oh, of fine. animals it's, that it's is? Not, oh no, it's trapped. Yeah, we'll we'll free it. <laughs> we'll free over here. Oh hey hey, go out that way. Oh no. Come on. Sorry, there's a bug that got stuck into the plastic. He doesn't want to come out, but I'll leave it open. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we tried a bruschetta, which was very good. Yeah, but it was kind of very light tasting. Wendy says, don't eat it. Oh, the bug? No, don't worry. <laughs> the prosciutto, though, is very good. It's very interesting. It just uh, has a very kind of more heartier taste to it. It's more complex flavor. Mm. Oh, I like this one better than the one from today. And this pig lived a very varied life he had a very complex mm. relationships i can tell can you taste his life i can taste his <laughs> life yeah all the complex relationships he had <laughs> hence the flavor of the prosciutto you can tell that you know he was a complicated pig let's just say that he was a complicated pig all right now with the with the cheese and this is what cheese is this i don't know in this area, I think we have two types of cheese. This is the um, younger one, the other one is the older one. Mm, okay. Mm. Oh wow. I like this. This was, has funk to it. Mm. It has a nice funk to it. And super creamy super creamy and airy so it has holes in it mm -hmm. yeah like Swiss cheese wow that's really good that's really Ooh, good yeah. I love this type yeah. of cheese yeah I like it very much it's funky that's why I like about it yeah because mm. uh, a lot of cheeses here in Italy are a little bit more kind of passive in terms of taste <laughs> Yeah. You are right. But but these, these cheeses kind of have a nice punch to them. Mm. Mountain cheese. That's the punch. Mountain cheese, right. That's it's getting really cold now. Now it's getting very cold, yeah. Mm, uh, maybe, we're gonna... I, maybe I will go to the car just one second to check if I have some kind of jacket. For me? Yes, yeah. I'm not well, sure. Okay, <laughs> but, but we're, we're about to end at soon. At least I try. <laughs> yeah. Is it far away, the car? No, it's just here. Oh, right there. Oh, it is right there, okay. The cream colored one. Okay, thank you. I don't promise anything because we, we had the the receipts fly away as well. Mm. All right, I had to grab the receipts. I thought there was a heat wave, Ash. Well, there is in Florence, but I'm in the Alps, so no, <laughs> it's 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 cold. It, it feels like a October day in, in uh, or late October. It feels like Halloween in New York City. It's that cold, and the clouds are coming in. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm gonna have more of this um, amazing meal over here. And it's nippy, yeah, it's quite nippy. <laughs> Let me show you. The clouds coming in. It's much warmer in Udine, so I didn't expect it to be this cold. 
so now I'm going to try this other cheese and let's see how, how it is. See, so it says uh, go eat um, in the car. Yes, we will. Try this out. Oh my god, no worries. I found some sort of a blanket. Okay. No it's not the warmest thing. It's more to lay down in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> but at least, you know, on the legs. That's great, yeah, thank you. That's nice. At least some protection. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> nice blanket. It's really chilly. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh my god. This aged cheese. This is the one you were looking for? Yes. <laughs> Let me try a little this piece. This brought in the funk. <laughs> this is really good. Wow. Mm. You know, this is the most fuel and cheese that I can think of. Mm. I, it's not my favorite, I must say. Mm. I prefer the um, not so aged ones. And my father's favorite cheese is this one. So you have the same taste. Yeah, so for me, I really love aged cheese. I really, as I mentioned many times, the funk. Mm -hmm. And this one really brings on the funk. You know what we should do? We should put it on our backs. Because mm. the wind is coming from the mountain, I think. That's why it's so cold. Oh, we'll wrap up soon. Wait. Yeah, here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I think this is going to be much better. <laughs> Can we see Mary Jane's necklace? If you want to oh. show it, yeah. Okay, now. There it is not a sun. This is a Turkish necklace. It's, oh. um, yeah, my husband's family mm -hmm. gifted it to me for my wedding. Oh my God, is it a family heirloom? No, it's no, not, okay. but okay, it's okay. a traditional kind of uh, piece of jewelry that they gift for weddings. That's amazing. To the That's bride. So cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So now for the very last thing before we head out is... I'm gonna try the smoked beer, but the before beer. before I have the smoked beer, I'm gonna try one more piece of this. So uh, hold this other side so I can rip it off because it's uh, there. We go. Thank yes. you. Yes. So, so we instead of breaking the bread, we broke the frico. <laughs> and this piece of polenta also. Mm. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh no, the smaller piece. Mm. Uh-oh. Get another one. <laughs> there you go. That's a lot better. So how do you guys know each other? We met each other through... Action Kid? Action Kid, yes. I contacted you because I met Action well, Kid You first. reached out to me, yeah. And then he you made DM'd a collaboration me. with you. Yeah. And I saw it and I thought, oh wow, this guy is very interesting. Mm. He talks about the history of the places. I want to meet him mm -hmm. and collaborate. So we've done a few collaborations before. Mm -hmm. You can check it out on our channel. So you did on my channel, you can check out history of Chinese Americans food mm -hmm. in New York City. It's a mini series of four videos and Jackson Hyde's food tour also right. featuring urbanist. And I interviewed you about the history of making your channel. Okay, so the very last thing, ooh, we got the crunchy part of the frico right there. Mm -hmm. so you the, like it or not? I really like it, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> it I prefer like the, the, the uh, softer one. So it tastes like the frico chips. Right, yeah. it's yeah. the same thing. Same thing, okay. So, if you have any last remaining questions, feel free to ask before we freeze. <laughs> but we won't freeze, luckily we're going back to Udine, which is a bit warmer. <laughs> I want to, to try a little bit of that now. Okay, so uh, where can I serve it to you? Is there a sauce on the polenta? No, there isn't. No, 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 it's just plain polenta. It's just grilled a little bit. That's fine. It's a, a little bit grilled. This is the color of the beer, by the way. This is the smoked one. Also local, made in this town. Yeah, that's so dark. Wow. Yeah. 
you can take it. I, I feel better than you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because you have I a huge this, sweater. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, 3,000 stars were sent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mm. So the shred is up. Salute. <laughs> Oh wow! I thought I wouldn't like it. Yeah, it's not that it doesn't taste smoky as like uh, you would uh, spicy sauce, where <laughs> you get that really intense smoke. I've had smoked beers before, not this this brand, and I didn't like them at all. I couldn't even finish them. But this one, it's kind of sweet, right? It has, it's sweet. Yeah. It reminds me of a stout beer. That's exactly what I was about to say. It has that coffee yeah. kind of um, flavor. It tastes, it tastes like a Guinness. Mm -hmm. It tastes like a Guinness. But better than the Guinness, because I don't like the Guinness either. Oh, don't say that. I have a lot of Irish people tuning in. <laughs> Sorry, I, lo I love Ireland. <laughs> it's just the Guinness. You just offended the entire country. <laughs> now we can't do collabs in Ireland. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm going to learn to like it. <laughs> but I know you, what you mean. This is not as um, creamy as a Guinness or, a, or a, uh, other type of stouts. It's a little bit less creamy. It tastes like you had that amber beer, mm. but get the coffee kind of more caramelly notes from a uh, stout. And that's, that's the type of consistency. The beer is not as thick as a stout. Or a triple. I just think we can also go inside to, to have this. No, I don't think they're allowing seating inside. Yeah, yeah, they do. They're, okay. Yeah, yeah. But we're about to end anyways. So mm -hmm. if you ask any questions, feel free to ask. No dessert. No, no dessert. Uh, <laughs> keeping the stomach empty for that crostata mm. later at night. The crostata. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like the Guinness, so you're forgiven, says Kay. Oh, Kay, you... Oh, interesting. <laughs> Kay's a fellow Irish woman. What are you drinking? Is this the... Yes, this is the famous smoked beer of... Sauris. Sauris. Or Zare in local language. Hence the name, Zare, mm -hmm. beer. Highly recommend it. If I could take it home as a souvenir, I would. But I can't because I'll be charged with smuggling and then I'll be held at customs for a few hours. Mm. So sweet. Everyone, thank you so much for watching from the Alps here. I thought I was joking around, but Mary Jane <laughs> said to me earlier in the day, it. we're going to the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> you made it to the Alps. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, ladies and gentlemen. And in this case, it turned out really well because this was a gorgeous place. <laughs> so I'm so glad we ended up coming to the Alps. Where can people find more of your work? <clears throat> On YouTube, What a Shame Mary Jane. Check you it out. You can find me there. Check it out, was she Mary Jane? Um, yes. She also has an amazing Patreon. So patreon.com slash what is she Mary Jane? Mary Jane? Yes. And you have awesome bonus videos. If anyone's very curious about the creative process, which I really don't talk about unless if it's on Instagram, um, check out Mary Jane's Patreon Thank because you. it has and amazing things. Feel free to comment on my videos. I read all my comments and I answer to most of them and to write me emails or messages if you feel like I love receiving feedbacks or commentaries whatever you like contact me personally I love that you're putting me on the spot because I'm the opposite <laughs> <laughs> well it's you know personal styles <laughs> I put all my energy into these live videos so yeah, all like Mary Jane I do not respond to too many comments but I appreciate everyone tuning in live everyone thank you so much for tuning in from Friuli from What's the name of the town again? Sauris. Sauris here. <laughs> From the Karnik Alps. Keep being awesome and always keep on drinking beer. I mean, exploring. Salute. All right, let's say bye. Arrivederci, amici.